we're going to go ahead and get started. If everyone could take their seats. Thank you all for being here, making it through such horrible weather. I don't know if it stopped raining or not. but. Uh, all right, well, good evening and welcome to the Monday, December 9th meeting of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners. Will everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will make notice that the board met in uh, executive session immediately preceding this meeting. Um, everyone was present with the exception of Commissioner Clark and we discussed matters of personnel, uh, legal and uh, real estate. Before we get into the consent agenda, um, I just want to congratulate several groups for some wonderful events this past weekend, certainly the Wayne Business Association uh, for the tree lighting and the Radnor Fire Company for their support of that, as well as uh, our own township staff and our police. Um, it was a wonderful event, and uh, I know many, many people went into making that uh, such a great evening and weekend, as well as... Yes, I will let you say it, don't worry. You can. I just also want to congratulate the Radnor Memorial Library uh, for their jingle run. I know that they had uh, exceeded their expectation for runners, um, exceeded their amount from last year, and uh, then hopefully means they exceeded their fundraising number as well. So uh, congratulations on that. I know you had a, a wonderful morning. Commissioner Farhi. Just like to thank township staff, our public works, police, Tammy Cohen, as well as the community for, com for coming out to the Garrett Hill for Thaniel Tree Lighting and All Seasons for their lovely 15-foot spruce tree. Anything anyone else wants to add? Any thank yous? Okay. Consent agenda. Is there anything anyone would like to pull from this consent agenda this evening? No? Anything the staff would like to pull from the consent agenda? Is there anything the public would like to pull from this evening's consent agenda? All right, I would like a motion to approve the consent agenda, please. So moved. May I get a second? Second. All right, all those in favor of this evening's consent agenda, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing with Commissioner Clark absent. Recognition um, this evening. So Commissioner Nagel, if we can uh, invite you down, and I believe that the Parks and Rec Committee uh, first has something that they would like to present. Hi, John. Do you guys want to? Do you guys want to stand? Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Parks and Recreation Board would like to recognize, thank, and honor John for his hard work, passion, and continued support of the Radnor Township Park System. John has continually recognized the value of our parks, both for the residents of our township and as a proponent of the value of our real estate. While a member of the Board of Commissioners, he has promoted the improvement of our parks as well as the need for maintenance in them, and he's been an avid supporter of, the, of this board and our efforts towards these goals. As many, you know, as many of you know, John was also a member of the Parks and Rec Board for about 10 years. So, John, thank you for your dedication to this community and to our valuable park system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill and uh, Chris and Claire for being here this evening to represent the board and Tammy as well. Okay, um, Mr. Zankowski. Thank you, uh, John. It's been a long time here. Uh, it's good to see a lot of people in the community turn out for you. Um, I know this is just a fraction of this. Uh, I know one of our former commissioners, uh, Don Curley, is in the back of the room there. 
um, that's come out tonight, as well as a lot of our community members. Um, I know, John, I first met you a little over nine and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I know I had a conversation with John prior to starting here. I know there was a big snowstorm up here in Philly and a big snowstorm back in uh, Ohio at the same day. And I know John and uh, John Fisher at the time actually questioned me quite a bit on the phone uh, before I actually even came up here. Um, I know that there's a lot that's been done uh, under your leadership here. A lot of phone calls and communications. Uh, John represented his residents extremely well. Um, I would get calls and emails from John around the clock, weekends, holidays. Uh, he cared about the community. Uh, he loves this uh, community dearly. Uh, and it's evident in the work that you've done. I'll miss John's uh, usual meetings uh, once a week on Friday mornings. Uh, John would come in with a list of things in his ward that between either resident concerns, uh, issues with roads, bridges, you name it, John had a long list to kind of make sure it was on the radar of staff to make sure that we were addressing and trying to take care of. Um, and a lot has taken place too that uh, in the transition here into right. new administration, new staff uh, as well to help, to help that transition go extremely uh, well. Um, I want to thank your family for sharing John with us. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of times he's been taken away from family activities or events, but uh, he did it because he cared so much about this community. So thank you for your sacrifices too, as well as John, your time. Uh, on behalf of the entire staff, I know everyone has enjoyed working with you, John. Uh, and uh, always uh, you had a good word to say to staff and to thank them. And I know that goes a long way with those folks that are out there every single day um, in the cold and the heat, whatever the weather is, uh, they're always very responsive and I know they always have uh, good words to say about you and your little postcards to them went a long way every year uh, to thank the staff for what they did. So uh, John, I can't thank you enough for what thank you've you. done and what you've accomplished. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. All right, so John, we're only gonna make you stand here for a little bit, because I know you hate this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I've known John, I'm not sure how long I've known you, John, but John is a, a member of the church that I grew up in that my parents belong to. John's been my parents' commissioner uh, for many years, and uh, everyone over in the Fifth Ward certainly speaks very highly of John. Um, on a personal note, John is, uh, he is a commissioner to um, emulate um, he has taught me so much about what it means to be responsive to residents, um, what it means to um, contribute to the community, what it means to put, as Bob said, community first. And John has always done that. Um, he has been a champion for our trails, for our open space. Um, we have so much in this township that John leaves as a legacy. Um, that we will enjoy for many, 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 many years to come that his grandchildren will, uh, will enjoy as well. So, uh, John, we will, uh, we miss you. We thank you for your contributions. And uh, we hope you have a lot of time to spend now with your grandchildren who I know. Oh, and Barbara as well. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be calling anymore while you guys are trying to have dinner. Um, so uh, we really want to thank you and, uh, and congratulate you. Thank, thank you for you. your service. So on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and the staff in the community, we'd like to present John with this a small token of our appreciation, and it reads, Radnor Township's Award of Appreciation is hereby granted to John C. Nagel in recognition of your dedicated service to Radnor Township community by serving on the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners. Please know that the citizens, commissioners, and staff of Radnor Township sincerely appreciate and thank you for your outstanding performance and lasting contributions to help make Radnor Township the best place to live, work, play, and do business on the main line. John, thank you so much. Thank you. 
I promised John Rice that I wouldn't make a long speech tonight, save him the trouble of reading it ahead of time. But it has been uh, a wonderful 10 years. Uh, I actually took office a little early because I was filling an unexpired term. So I, uh, a year, 10 years and a day or so. Uh, and as Chris mentioned, the parks are the thing I've always loved the most about this township. I uh, previously spent 13 years on Parks and Rec and four as the chair of the, the, of the committee. Um, we have a great community. I'm still going to be active, um, especially Parks and Rec. I'll stay right there, and I'm going to stay involved with the trail program. And as you know, we have some great trails, and we're going to have more. So uh, I want to thank the staff especially. They've uh, Ten years ago when I first took office, um, I believe it was Elaine Schaefer that made the comment that our staff essentially woke up one day and we're now working for a new company because how much things changed, uh, especially with hiring Bob and Bill at all. Uh, so uh, I want to thank them especially for making this a great community. They were out today doing uh, leaves in the pouring rain. I think that's pretty magnificent and thank all the citizens in my ward for voting for me. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, so we, before we move on, I'd like to, do any of my fellow commissioners have anything they'd like to say to Commissioner Nagel? And then I'd like to give the public an opportunity if the, I know that com, uh, former Commissioner Curley is here. So if anyone would like to come up and say a few words, um, Please do. I think the rule is that I have to be briefer than John was, so this will be real fast. Uh, John was tremendously helpful to me, both in the process of campaigning and getting started. He continues to be helpful to me, and unfortunately for him, he's going to have to continue to be helpful for, for me as he cycles off the board. But he will continue to have my gratitude then as he does right now. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Kind of echo those thoughts, John. You certainly were uh, taught me a lot when I came in. I came in under a much different circumstance. So I appreciate everything that you've done. You got me caught up to speed. And I think you've earned, uh, earned this retirement 10 times over. So enjoy. Hey, John, thank you. Uh, thank you for your service. It's hard to say that anybody works harder than anybody else because you all work very hard but it's very easy to say that nobody worked harder than John. So in our time together, uh, every, every subcommittee meeting, every group meeting, every public event, John was always there. He was always there uh, for me when I needed more information. So always appreciated the effort. Uh, Bob, you talked about the Friday morning meetings. For me, that was bagel with Nagel. That was on my calendar. Uh, and it was a, a, a big part of it. And it was also kind of fun. I enjoyed meeting John. And one of, the, uh, one of the highlights was the personal friendship that we developed over that eight years. Always got along great as professionals, but I also enjoyed the personal friendship that you and I had. So thank you for lending him to us for that. And thank you all for the opportunity to think, speak and thank John for his service. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Curley. Is there is there anyone else who'd like to anyone else who'd like to speak? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, John. And and we do also have a, a recognition for Commissioner Clark, and we will do that as soon as he arrives. Um, he is a, with a commitment with his uh, children this evening. So. Um, all right. Recognition of uh, Kristen Brown. Tammy. I take take the microphone here, and if I stand behind that, you won't be able to see me. <laughs> so, um, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Tammy Cohen, the director of recreation. Um, I'm joined here with uh, Tracy Croom, who is our program coordinator for the department, uh, and Kirsten Brown. She goes by Kirby, so I'm going to refer to her by her nickname. 
Um, so tonight is an opportunity uh, to recognize Kirby. She uh, has been with our department for 15 years as part of our summer programs. It's amazing to have a summer staff member be with you for 15 years because it's such a high turnover area, you know, working for the summer camp programming. Uh, so to have somebody stick around for 15 years, um, hopefully we're doing something right. Uh, but Kirby, uh, this is more than just a 15-year milestone. Uh, this is about her leadership and her dedication to the program and everything that she's put forth. Uh, Kirby is actually a lifelong resident here of Radnor Township, so she has poured her heart into all the time that she's given us. She joined us in 2004, and she was a, a summer camp counselor, just getting, getting her feet wet with the preschool camp program. And then within four years, she actually rose to the role of director, which was pretty amazing in a small amount of time, uh, especially in that field. Um, and she was one of our finest preschool directors that we, we've ever had, at least during in my tenure and being here for about 20 years. So. Then she actually rose again into the day camp director role uh, in 2016, so actually after serving as preschool director for seven years, which was amazing. Uh, then taking on, of course, the role of day camp director, which is a Herculean effort in overseeing about 40 staff members, um, uh, interacting with uh, all the different layers of the school district, of course, and then 200 campers. Um, so, you know, while I'm sure a lot of her educational cohorts spend their summers on vacation enjoying the downtime, Kirby's running our, our, our crazy Radnor day camp for us, and she's still with us today. We hope to keep her for another, hopeful, hopefully, 15 years. Um, and then to top it off, Kirby actually attended the camp for 10 years. So she has been around our, our day camp and our children here in the, in the Radnor Township community for quite a long time, and, and it's impressive all the time and the efforts and the energy that you've brought. So I uh, definitely want to say thank you for your time with us. Again, hopefully have, we have another 15 years and, and definitely looking forward to continuing to work together. So we have a, uh, we have a plaque here for Kirby. Uh, Kirby's favorite color is purple. Uh, it's something that I think every day of her life she wears in some way, shape, or form. So it would only be fitting to get her a purple plaque. <laughs> so I'll just read it. Uh, on behalf of Radnor Township, in recognition and s sincere appreciation of your 15 years of dedication and leadership in the Recreation Department. Thank you so much. Do you just want to stay up there? Are you handling toys for tots as well? Yes. All right. Of course, the recreation department would be behind all the wonderful toys up here. <laughs> uh, so at this time, I want to invite up our two representatives uh, who are here from Toys for Tots, uh, Hospital Corpsman Richard Kite and uh, Corporal Joseph Rines. So they're going to come forward. Uh, Toys for Tots is a uh, organization that we've been fundraising for uh, since 2015. Uh, what we did was we started uh, this effort and uh, Toys for Tots is the beneficiary in 2015 as part of the Santa's Delivery Program, uh, which for those of you who don't know, that's the program that we have where uh, we have a, a pre-registered gift uh, for um, each of the children. Um, that happens um, here, uh, usually the, the day after Black Friday, uh, as part of Santa Claus, who goes out and he actually does his practice route that night uh, in effort to get ready for the big night that comes up on the 25th. And as part of it, we actually ask the, the families to contribute a gift as well for Toys for Tots. So when we started the program in 2015, uh, we took, about nine, took in about 90 gifts. And this year, we actually started a new campaign, which we asked all the families who are registering gifts to do a one-for-one. One. So if you have a household that's gonna be receiving a gift on Santa's delivery, we asked you to make a contribution to Toys for Tots. And amazingly, um, we collected 587 gifts. Um, they're all up here behind me, as you can see. Um, I know it's hard to not wanna look at them. There's some, it looks like a lot of fun things to play with. I know Tracy and I had went through them all and there's a variety of different things that are here that our families here in Radnor Township contributed. There's everything from games to arts and crafts to educational toys, boys toys, girls toys, all kinds of things. Uh, and we're blessed to be here tonight to make this contribution uh, to a lot of needy families, of course. 
Um, and I just want to give a thank you to all the parents and families that participated, uh, as well as the Board of Commissioners, our Township Manager, and the Police Department for keeping this great program, Santa's Delivery, going. Because um, without it, we wouldn't have been able to make this big contribution here tonight. So we want to thank you for helping us meet our goal. She introduced me. I'm uh, HM2 Kite. Uh, I just actually moved and got stationed here about five days ago. <laughs> I just came from uh, Cincinnati. Uh, so we have people and Marines and uh, uh, members at Folsom, community members, that's actually working until 8 o'clock at night, bagging up toys and sending them out to the uh, communities in the area. Uh, so far, we probably bagged up about 1,500 toys, and there's a lot more to go. We have a warehouse at our HTC and located in Folsom, which is a reserve Marine Corps base there. Uh, so as soon as we take these toys, they're gonna bag them up and we have them going up to families by request, uh, depending on the age of the child and uh, what they're looking for and their gender. So uh, it's a great thing. I've been a part of it for two years, actually three years. Um, and it's, it's fun, it's fun around this season. So. I enjoy it a lot. I don't have kids personally, but I like to give. So I appreciate your community for getting all these wonderful toys to all these wonderful children. <laughs> so thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Corporal Rines. Uh, so this is like my second year doing Tour for Tots. And um, actually, this is like amazing because we were running low on um, on uh, older uh, girl toys, teenager girl toys. So this is like this is like great that now I see this. I was like I was getting worried, like oh man, you know. So I want I want to thank everybody for support. Everyone who came out here. Um, so yes, thank you. I know I know a lot of, a lot of children and preteens are gonna love this. So from the bottom of my heart and from the Marine Corps, thank you. All right, thank you for bearing with us. We are going to take a five, 10 minute recess and we're going to move the toys out. Yes, you gentlemen want to take them right now. They're so excited. They need to get them to Santa so he can get them out. So um, we are going to take, uh, so it's seven o'clock. We will come back here at 7.10. Um, and anyone who wants to help move toys, we will uh, gladly accept the assistance. So thank you and thank you to all the Radner families who donated. I was there the day they, collected them and it was pretty amazing. So is it all right, um, is it all right with the board if we take a few, a, five, a 10 minute recess and move the toys out? Yes, anyone object? All right, consensus says move the toys. Thank you.
All right, does everyone want to come back and we will uh, get started? Everyone ready? Everyone back? You guys all right? Oh. All right. Thank you to everyone who helped make quick work of those toys. They're already gone. Are they already gone? The, the uh, Marines don't mess around, do they? All right. Yeah, I think your grandson was trying to steal some. Um, all right, well, welcome back, and thank you, everyone, for your help in uh, getting all those toys out. Uh, I will now call for public participation. So anyone who's interested in speaking tonight, please come forward. No public participation? Lisa, will there be public comment before item 6B, before you vote on the motion? Uh, yes, there will be. Okay, then I'll mm -hmm. speak then. Thank you. Okay. Is there uh, any other any other public comment this evening? Please come up. I'm begging for public comment. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Sumant Joseph. I'm a resident of 117 Garrett Avenue since 2004. Um, I'm in the Overlay District, and. Uh, I think we have Benny Prater as well, and I think that's about it right now. Um, in regards to this um, developer who built this, um, I, I don't think anyone really asked any of the actual residents in, in the Overlay District what they thought of it. And frankly, I think just speaking with all the, uh, the other own property owners, a lot of them are absentee landlords as well. Um, and this is kind of what happened, how the zoning even came about was pretty much a lot of absentee landlords and then this group that of people who don't even live in our <laughs> district, who don't even live in our street, or decided to say, we're gonna deem how, how you guys should live and how your property should be. And if you look at it, and since, since it's been enacted, it's kind of, the properties have all been dilapidated. We can't do much. It costs a lot of money and there's a lot of restrictions. Um, so even if a developer said, hey, I wanna come and buy your properties out, uh, for a lot more money because I can do something with it. They can't and they won't. But they can to the people on the other side of the bridge and the people of where the empty lot was and because they're zoned um, um, uh, mixed use. Um, and now this whole thing about um, this peak roof, I, I don't think it really matters. I mean, even it's whether even my property, uh, when they came up with this new zone, Garrett Hill zoning code, no one even knew what it meant, but it, it also, we were, we're still non-conforming, even my house is, and a few other properties are. So the fact that, you know, how they want to go about, you know, changing things and have them tear it down, I don't know anything about the developer, and, and frankly, you know, I, I, I don't have an opinion for or against them, but at the same time, I think it actually betters our street, and it allows, uh, and I think also, getting rid of this um, overlay district is, I, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, and, and every time I spoke up against it, it, you know, I had personal harassment from, from members where they went through my cars, um, on my property, they made false complaints to the township and to the Radnor police several times. And I'm sorry on behalf of the township and the Radnor police for wasting their time, but they did this since 2009. And, and to me, I think, I think when people go to that level, to intimidate people to say, you can't, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna stop you. I even have an email from one of the members to another member of that group saying, Sue Man's uh, challenging us in the township. We gotta do something to stop him. They actually wrote that. And to me, that just says that what they're about and what their intentions are, are purely unethical and not meant for the rest of the group. I think it's perfectly fine. And I, and I actually um, uh, voted for Sean in because I talked to him before and he had some great ideas on what to do with our, our ward. And, and, I, and I totally back him. And I, and I think the rest of us do as well. But I think we, we have to have the final decision, not some group that has nothing to do with our, that somehow, I don't know how, they convinced the township to come up with a zoning that was, that you know, violates our basic property rights 
uh, as property owners in Radnor Township and as tax as property uh, paying for property taxes as well. I feel that we should have more of a right and and even kind of a say in it, it, you know in what happens in our in our confines, but we didn't. And I hope you guys can look into that and say, hey, maybe maybe we got to put a stop to the this, you know groups like this that intimidate people and actually listen to the residents and let things happen. Um, and you know it, it's it, it doesn't. I hope we relook re re at this just in, from a different perspective. But I also think if we even went back to our uh, previous zoning of C1 commercial, I don't think it would hurt anybody. I think everyone would be happy. And I don't think we'd have some external group having to have some say in what the township does. That is the charge of the township, not some other group. Um, that's it. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Is there any additional public comment this evening? Okay, let's move on. Um, moving on to resolution 2019-133, seeking voluntary contributions to necessary township services. Commissioner Farhi. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. It's just uh, for those that read the resolution, it's just uh, every year we seem to have a shortfall. Uh, this year, usually uh, it's one pocket or another. Um, we're having an issue with our fire department this year, and all it is is just um, saying to Villanova that they've had a, a lot of success in what they do, and if you look at their endowment, it's basically asking, if my math is correct, 25 cents from someone that has $750 to help with uh, some of our needs as they don't pay any property taxes. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, be before we have discussion, may I get a motion to introduce? I'm sorry, Jake, just really quick. May I get a mo motion to um, approve resolution 2019-133? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Can I yep. Thank you. I'm, I'm motion to table this resolution. Um, and, and my understanding is there are current discussions or there will be current, dis there will be discussions in the um, not so distant future between the Radnor Fire Company and uh, Villanova University and doing something on this motion tonight could jeopardize those discussions. Uh, so you made a motion to table. Do I have a second? Uh, I'll second. All right. Any discussion on motion to table? All right. I will call the vote. I'm no, sorry. Call for right. I will call the vote then. Um, all those in favor on the motion to table, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Nay. Okay. Motion fails. Four to. Th uh, I'm sorry. Four to two. I'm sorry. Um, don't confuse me like that. All right, motion fails four to two. So we are back to the original motion on resolution 2019-133. Um, any additional commissioner discussion? I have a question for John Rice. Is it legal to do this and only mention the one institution? Is it legal? Yes. So is that because it's a resolution, not an ordinance? It's a, res it's a resolution. It's a voluntary, you know, it's a request for... Uh, Villanova to make a voluntary contribution. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Friendly motion to amend the uh, now therefore clause currently says the Board of Commissioners Radnor Township that the township calls upon Villanova University to make annual va voluntary contribution to Radnor Township designated for emergency services. I would also uh, move for the amendment to include the language as follows. The township calls upon Villanova University, comma, Cabrini University, comma, Eastern University, and Eastern University to make an annual voluntary contribution to Radnor Township designated for emergency service in the amount of 250000 comma, 75000 comma, 75, and 75000 comma, collectively representing the 20, uh, then um, strike the um, the 2020, just representing projected increases in costs for EMS fire and fire services. Is there a second? I'll second. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Any uh, discussion on the motion to amend? 
Any staff comment on the motion to amend? The reason for me adding that is so that it is broader. It's, it's not intended to be calling out one university in my view. I mean, it's not my motion, but a, a friendly amendment would be instead of using just one of the universities, although it's the one that has the most resources, it would include all the universities that are currently um, in a similar situation, although smaller institutions. And um, it's a, again, an even application of the concept to those similarly situated within the township. Yeah, if we want to do something that's similarly situated to everyone, we should just say all nonprofits should pay a pilot. Cabrini and Eastern are not in the same ballpark as Villanova in terms of either their enrollment or the effect that they have on the township, for better or for worse. We get derive huge number of benefits from having all the Villanova students on campus. Cabrini is largely a community college. They're not here shopping in the same way that Villanova students are. But nonetheless, I mean, Eastern and Cabrini don't have the endowment that Villanova do. They don't have the effect on the community that Villanova does. They don't have the size that Villanova does. If what we're doing is we're asking for money from Villanova, let's not go bother a whole bunch of other people for whom this is going to come like a shot out of nowhere, and they're not going to understand why, and frankly, they're not going to pay it either. So let's either say everybody or just the people we're really talking about. Well, let me explain a little bit more about this. The history of this concept was we voted on this same concept several years ago. It was a resolution that uh, Bob actually put on the agenda. And at that time, it included all the universities. There was a, uh, a request of all the universities, and we, we did the same um, concept, and we named amounts for each of the universities. Uh, again, recognize the points that you made, but in this case, rather than singling out one university, it's all those taxpayers that are similarly situated in that they have large amounts of property that is exempt, and they do have residents, a substantial number of residents in the township who, who use ser services that are not always reimbursed. Um, our uh, director of, of fire, Eamon, talked about the shortfall amount on the ambulance um, that we get each year uh, that goes into collections or otherwise that is from people who use the ambulance and then um, for whatever reason don't, don't pay the full amount that's billed to the ambulance company. A large portion of that is from Villanova students, but there's also students from the other universities. I would vote, I would ask to exclude all other nonprofits um, because not all no other nonprofits can avail themselves of federal subsidies for student loans. So, this, the people in the university systems in the current setup have uh, a great influx of, re influx of revenue uh, subsidized by the federal government and they are able to absorb this more easily than all of the others. So consistent with the prior vote and because of the university's unique sources of funds, I would leave it at just the universities. Um, that's the rationale for it, but let's, let's call the question. All right, so any other comment to the, uh, the suggested amendment or the amendment on the table? Is there any staff comment to the amendment on the table? Any public comment to the amendment to the motion on the table? All right, so we will go ahead and vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment as indicated by Commissioner Booker, which would add Cabrini and Eastern University, as well as add $75,000 uh, for each one of those entities to that paragraph. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna read it exactly. Um, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion passes uh, four to two. So we will amend that um, to include now Cabrini and Eastern. Um, and back to the now amended uh, resolution 2019-133. Is there any um, additional comment to this resolution? 
All right, I, I will comment. Um, as Commissioner Booker said, this has been voted on. A similar uh, idea has been voted on before. Um, you know, and uh, I appreciate Commissioner Abel bringing forth the um, the information that the police, to, the fire department, will be meeting with Villanova to discuss um, ways that they can partner together. I think that that is um, an excellent. Um, idea, and I think that you know. I hope that those conversations are fruitful. Um, you know, again, this is certainly this is a voluntary contribution, um, and uh, as such, I think it is just more of uh, a way for us to hopefully, uh, depending on how the vote goes, um, have additional conversations with our uh, our colleges and universities. So I think brings so much to our community, and um, let's work on ways that we can. Uh, figure out um, how we can fund our, our emergency services, our fire departments, which it, it is becoming certainly um, a, a significant issue and how we fund those. So um, any staff, any other additional commissioner comment? I'm sorry. Well, I, I, think I, th I think there's a possibility that that could happen, but if we pass this tonight, um, there's, there's no telling what the university will do. They could back away from those discussions. So. Um, and, and this is a non-binding resolution, so it's a request. So I, I don't see what the rush is to pass this. Let those discussions take place, and if then nothing comes from it, then you can bring this forward. But to do this prior to that meeting, uh, I think we're really jeopardizing um, what you guys are trying to accomplish, which is to fund the fire department. Okay, thank you. Any other comment? Is there any staff comment? Any public comment to resolution 2019-133? All right, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of the amended version of resolution 2019-133, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Okay, motion passes four to two. Moving along, uh, motion to approve DJB Properties, David Brasso Settlement Agreement. Um, Mr. Rice. Okay. Um, What's in front of the board is a proposed settlement agreement and release uh, involving the uh, appeal, land use appeal by DJB Properties LLC uh, from a adverse decision of the Township Zoning Hearing Board. Um, as the board knows, there's a fairly lengthy history regarding uh, the property at 131 Garrett. It's a uh, twin building, there's two dwelling units, uh, brand new building uh, that was built uh, out of compliance with the height requirements. Uh, the township um, pursued some enforcement of that and there was an appeal of the township's enforcement action, it's known as a violation to the Zoning Hearing Board and the Zoning Hearing Board upheld that, which was then subsequently appealed. Um, this settlement uh, resolves that appeal uh, the, uh, the terms uh, of the settlement agreement uh, basically would uh, involve the township withdrawing its enforcement action. The uh, dormer and the roof, uh, the roof exceeds the height requirement. The dormer is on the front of the, uh, front of the uh, property. Um, on the roof, they would remain as they've been built. And then um, DJB Properties would pay the township $10,000, uh, which would be designated for uh, improvements to the Garrett Hill neighborhood, which would be determined uh, by the township and the neighborhood. Uh, the payment would be made to the township. And there's a general release of any claims that anybody may have involving uh, this litigation. Um, fairly straightforward. Um, <clears throat> been a lot of discussion it's my recommend <clears throat> my recommendation that the board approve it um, I don't believe this is something that we want to continue to litigate in Delaware County um, given all the facts and circumstances that we're aware of at this point um, uh, mr. Brasso um, is in agreement with this um, assuming the board votes on this tonight it would then be filed with the court by motion <clears throat> and that would resolve uh, the matter. 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rice. May I get a motion to approve the uh, settlement agreement with DJB Properties, David Brasso? So moved. May I get a second? Second. Okay. Any commissioner comment to the settlement agreement? Uh, any com any commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? Uh, I'll. Oh, I'm I, sorry, I, Jake. I, sorry, I'm a little slow. Um, th th there are no winners in, in this scenario. So we we passed this, we approved this tonight, and the neighbors who were part of putting together this overlay district, um, you know, they're going to be they're going to be left with a house that has a dorm on it, and that's, what, that's the one thing they've requested be taken off. The, the problem I have with that is you take the dormer off, the house is still going to be over 30 feet, so it still doesn't abide by the, um, the code. Um, so I, I'm going to vote against this, I'm going to vote against um, this resolution, not because I don't think this is a good option. I think this is the best option that was presented to us. But to me, this is a curtain. And if you pull back the curtain, you've got to look at why this happened. And until I see some accountability on our side um, and why this took place, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, uh, yeah, I think that's the first step we have to do. And this is just window dressing. And it's going to happen again. You know, it happened at 219 Poplar, it happened at Wawa. And now we're seeing it in, in, in Garrett Hill. So, um, no, I think this is the best option that was presented to us, but I'm voting against it because um, I don't think it gets to the issue um, and, and why this occurred. I would echo Commissioner uh, Abel's comments. The, the issue is the township is in a very bad situation because it was the township that approved the building notwithstanding that it didn't comply. The, the township reviewed it, the township issued the permit, and the advice we've been given is that there's very little, I think 25% or less chance of us prevailing should we try to enforce the code after the fact, after approving it. We would because the developer relied upon our approval, we would have a very difficult time requiring, uh, getting a court to require the developer to reduce the size of the building. And that's the legal status of it. There's just, it's not worth it for us. So as Jake's indicated, this is probably a settlement is probably the best situation for the township but the issue is is well the point is well taken it's the accountability that we need to have um, for in the township and and I would add the other one on this um, that Jake left out was it with the 145 King of Pressure Road site we we gave a letter that basically indicated that steep slopes were uh, man-made and, and that was not actually the case there's at least it wasn't documented in conformity with our code so we, we have to have controls that we ensure that this doesn't happen again and um, I think Lisa mentioned you know what have we learned from this so we er, earlier this evening we, what have we learned is the key what are the processes that this township is going to change that will ensure that this doesn't happen again. To put everyone's mind at ease, this is not set a precedent. Um, I do not believe that uh, any future uh, land use lawyers could come in and say, this building is above height, all of them should be, you know, you know, my client should be allowed to be above height. I don't think that that argument will work, but don't, don't think that it won't be tried. Okay, all right, it, it may well be tried. But nonetheless, um, Commissioner Fari has uh, indicated to me that he's spoken with all the neighbors that, that while there are strong feelings on, on various points on both sides of this, that his belief is that um, this is the best for his community and um, I'm willing to provide deference um, 
and, and rely on him to, to speak with his constituents. So um, I think at this point that um, removing the dormers would not lower the, the height of the building and so really is not, I, I don't believe that it will make it seem lower. So, you know, that's, that's my view on it and, and reasonable people can, can differ. But um, uh, in light of the legal position, the weak legal position that we have to go forward, uh, I think this is the best alternative. One more thing, last point. One of, the, one of the neighbors talked to me about we should make a claim against insurance and um, the developer should go to his architects, errors and emissions insurance and let the insurance companies work out and try to fix this, um, this issue. Um, but again, I'm advised that that is not a practical solution for where we are with this um, approval at this point. So um, in light of the foregoing, I think that um, we have very few options that really will satisfy everyone. So again, I, I will uh, defer to uh, Commissioner Fari and his communications with the people at this point. Any other commissioner comment? Oh, sorry, John. I can't in good faith support this. I believe this uh, settlement is an insult to the folks who worked hours upon hours, and not to mention the township tax dollars that went into the development of these ordinances. Uh, this overlay went through an extensive process in which everyone was offered opportunities to speak including, and there were several absentee landlords that came to those meetings. Uh, and I also think the argument that we haven't, that the people on the street should be the one to make the decision is a fundamental distortion about what zoning is about and how zoning works. So uh, I can't support this settle. So, John Rice, Mr. Solicitor. Can, should, I voted for to fight this um, and to require the develop, developer to lower the roof. Uh, what is your legal opinion on continuing with that, with that um, litigation? Should we continue on? I, I, if John, John makes the same point that I made originally, if we were going to fight it, we should fight it to the end, but that's not the advice that I understood we, at this point. We, we have had multiple discussions in executive session about the legal issues surrounding this. So it's before the board voted up, voted down, however you want to do it. Um, you know, is, it, is, this an issue, is this, this is not an issue of, where, of uh, there's a no fault with our zoning and the overlay in Garrett Hill, is there? No, there, look, there were, there were two mistakes made. We've only heard about the township's mistake. The architect also made a mistake for the property owner when he submitted the plans. We did not catch it. Um, this is not uh, a case that I, I think should be litigated in Delaware County. It's my recommendation that you approve the settlement agreement. Um, that's really all I have to say, Rich. And, and the zoning in the Garrett Hill overlay is not deficient and has not been sub, you know, abrogated or no. will not, this does not set a precedent no. for other other no. developers? No, absolutely not. So, so it's not, and, and we fully intend to enforce all zoning in the township going forward as we always have. When, when, when a mistake is made by a township on a land use ordinance, the township's not bound to keep making the same mistake over and over again. That's the way it works. It, people make mistakes with plans like this. This is what happened. Two mistakes were made. We're not bound by what happened in this particular case. So it's a mischaracterization to say that by going, entering into a settlement, we have somehow weakened or decided that our zoning is no longer applicable. No, no, I, so we're, we're, not, we're not doing that, right? We, this settlement does not mean our zoning is deficient or that we're not going to enforce it. Correct, it's not deficient because this is being settled. Settlements are, no one's usually happy when there's a settlement. Okay. You know, both sides are typically not happy. So, to me, that makes it a good settlement. 
an alternative is just to continue to, to battle and where we have very little chance of ultimately of prevailing on this. So that's our alternative, which we, we could choose to do that, I guess, is what is up to this board right now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rice. And I'm, I'm going to be brief because I know there's many who would like to make public comment. So, um, you know, I believe with uh, a hybrid of sort of what Commissioner Booker and Commissioner uh, um, Abel, yes, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, it's been a long day. Um, said, you know, this is, uh, this is, uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Um, Mr. Rice is correct. Mistakes are made on both sides. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, we now have to figure out, sort through this and figure it out. Um, and I appreciate the residents who have spent their time with me to educate me on the Garrett Hill overlay. Um, Patty and, and Rick, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, um, I I respect what you have done over there. I respect the uh, the intent of it, and you know, but I, I do believe that we have taken this as far as we can go at this point. Um, so I will be voting to approve the settlement agreement this evening and. Um, Hopefully we can put this behind us. It is not precedent setting. And as uh, Commissioner Booker mentioned, we did um, discuss this. And Mr. Uh, Zinkowski has assured us that there are uh, checks and balances now in, in place to make sure that something like this does not occur again. Um, and I believe you know, once you make a mistake, that is the way you learn from it. And uh, you learn from it, and you move on. And um, I believe that's what we need to do this evening. So. If there is any other commissioner comment, oh, Sean. Um, so I'll be voting for the settlement for a bunch of reasons. Um, from day one, this issue has always been about height. The dormers don't, they do not affect height, nor do they make the building look taller. The dormers are not an optical illusion. The height is the height, period. Um, and that is one of the reasons to, to take something that is nicer and to make and to almost deface it, I don't see serves a purpose. Um, during the election, and I canvassed. I canvassed the Garrett Hill overlay. Uh, I was at the polls, 7-2, most of the day, and that's where the people that live in the overlay vote. Um, no one that lived in the overlay told me that uh, they were all su supportive of making the, of keeping the house that looks as nice as it only increases their property values. Um, they told me that the overlay is too restrictive. It's outdated. Um, they told me, much as, as uh, Mr. Sumat said, um, because of the height restriction, the values are not on par with other homes in the area, which to me is a shame when someone spends 80% of their paycheck to pay a mortgage, and it can't appreciate. And the only thing that separates why one 12, 1500 square foot house can appreciate more than another 12 or 1200 or 1500 square feet house is something as arbitrary of being north or, th or south of trolley tracks. Um, so um, that again is just, it's hard for me to, to digest. Um, so I just have a question because I know there are a lot of people here. Who actually lives in the overlay? Can you just raise your hand? Does anyone? Okay, so the majority of the people don't live in the overlay and that was another issue that I was told at the polls and through my canvassing is that people that don't live in the overlay um, are telling people how to basically run their lives, how to live, and how much their property can appreciate. Um, I was told that I live here, I have to look at this, you may drive by it uh, you know, on your way using Garrett Avenue as a cut through. But I have to see something and look at it every day and I would rather see a nicer house, for lack of a better term, a better house, and a house that's gonna help uh, my property value increase. Um, 
The other thing, too, that I noticed, and, and we are experiencing regentrification in Garrett Hill, and especially on Garrett, Garrett Avenue, and that's going to come regardless whether, whether we vote for this or we don't vote for this. Um, I was told that the Garrett Hill overlay is less restrictive, but I disagree. In Garrett Hill, you can't build more laterally. There's no room. Most of the houses are twins or single, or there's maybe, I'm not kidding, four feet, three feet in between property lines. So really, the only place to go is up. Yes, you can go in the back if you're totally knocking the house down, but you're very limited on where you can build. And the other thing that I was told by the, uh, the voters and the people that lived on, on Garrett Avenue um, is that the, when the community came out, uh, again, it was mostly people that do not live in the overlay. And they were not representative, demographically speaking, of the regentrification, the new people that have children, families that live in the area. So because of this, um, I understand that there's a community group that is here, and I know that they've put a lot of hard work in this. I know that they put their blood, their sweat, their tears in this, and I understand it, but there also is a group of other people that are, that are also going to be disenfranchised. And for me, the most important thing is to look at who's in, <laughs> is to look at, sorry, Luke. Um, is to look at uh, who this affects mostly. And the true stakeholders in my mind are the people that either live in the overlay or own property in the overlay. And I know that we had a couple businesses where the business owners spoke to me about that. So um, I understand it's uh, not a good situation. It won't set a precedent, but I will be voting in favor of this settlement. Thank you. OK. Um Commissioner Clark, any comment on, we're discussing, I'm sorry, the settlement agreement for 131-133, uh, Garrett Ave. Nope. Okay. All right. Um, is there any staff comment to the motion to approve the settlement agreement? All right. I will call for public comment now. Good evening. Um, good evening. My name is Patty Barker. I live on Lewis Lane in Garrett Hill, Rosemont. Um, I'm going to ask for the board's indulgence. I know that the limit for people making comments is five minutes. I timed my comments, and it's nine minutes long. So um, I'm hoping that that will be okay. If it's not, my husband has agreed to cede his time to me. Thank you. I'm here tonight to tell you the story of 131-133 Garrett Avenue from a community member's perspective. It's imperative for you to understand that the proposed settlement before you this evening is one that completely disregards the resolution reached between the Garrett Hill neighbors and David Brasso. The Garrett Hill Zoning District ordinances were carefully crafted by our community 10 years ago. It took us two and a half years Hundreds of community members participated. The goal was to keep Garrett Hill the way it is and enable and encourage redevelopment by removing the restrictions imposed by its then current zoning. The outcome was zoning by the people, of the people, and for the people. These were not outsiders but rather community members and businesses within the zoning district and its surrounds working together to expand property rights. These ordinances became part of Radnor Township Zoning Code in October 2009. Construction on 131-133 Garrett Avenue began in November 2018. On February 25th of 2019, a Garrett Hill neighbor alerted the township that the building appeared to be in violation of Radnor Township zoning with regard to height. Thus began a 10-month journey of attempting to get Mr. Brasso to bring the building into compliance with Radnor Township zoning requirements. Everyone here, everyone, acknowledges that mistakes were made by Mr. Brasso as well as by the township. 
Here are some facts for your consideration. And by the way, my comments are in front of you, for, so feel free to read along. Mr. Brasso was informed about and given hard copies of the Garrett Hill Zoning District Ordinance documents in 2015 by members of the Garrett Hill community. The community approved of and supported publicly the architect's plan that Mr. Brasso submitted to the Garrett Hill community in 2016. Radnor Township approved a plan that was different from the one Mr. Brasso presented to the community. This plan was out of compliance with regard to height. The township missed that fact. After being informed of the violation, Kevin Kachansky informed Mr. Brasso about the height issue on February 26th. Mr. Brasso reached out to the Bryn Rose Civic Association on February 29th and asked to attend their meeting that evening. He wanted to, and I quote from his email, discuss his development project and get the view of the residents. Community members met with township personnel on a number of occasions, educated them about the Garrett Hill Zoning District ordinances, provided them with the erroneous and misleading architectural plans that Mr. Brasso submitted to the Garrett Hill community in 2015 and 2016, and offered their assistance in reaching a resolution. Community members continually asked the township to issue a stop work order. Numerous phone calls and emails were exchanged over this time period among community members, township personnel, and Mr. Brasso. A stop work order was finally issued on April 23rd, a full two months after the violation was first brought to the township's attention. Construction had continued during those two months. The township asked for and Mr. Brasso submitted height reduction proposals in May, which were rejected by the township. Mr. Brasso was allowed to continue construction during these negotiations. He then received a zoning enforcement notice on June 6th. Community members wrote to and spoke to the Board of Commissioner, Commissioners on June 10th. Throughout these months, Garrett Hillians met together as well as exchanging emails and phone calls. Neighbors went house to house along Garrett Avenue, canvassing and informing. Community members came again before you and wrote to you on July 15th. Block captains went door to door three separate times between July and September, delivering postcards to every residence on every Garrett Hill Street announcing the zoning hearing board appeal dates, along with a website for further information about the issue at hand. Community members met with township personnel to be prepared and informed in anticipation of the Zoning Hearing Board appeal. The appeal was held on August 29th. Eight Garrett Hill community members became parties to the proceedings, many of whom lived in close proximity to the property. The zoning appeal was tabled after four hours of discussion. The Zoning Hearing Board requested that Garrett Hillians and Mr. Brasso negotiate a resolution before their next meeting on September 19th. This was highly unusual. Garrett Hillians met on September 7th, came up with a proposed resolution. The township solicitor and the township manager were in attendance. Removal of the center dormer was item number one in the community's proposed resolution. Mr. Brasso, through his attorney, did not respond to the Garrett Hill proposed resolution before September 19th. The tabled appeal was voted upon by the Zoning Hearing Board on September 19th, and Mr. Brasso's appeal was denied. The Zoning Hearing Board found that Mr. Brasso had not acted in good faith. Their written decision was mailed on October 14th. Community members spoke with Mr. Brasso about a possible resolution on October 17th. On October 21st, Mr. Brasso, through his attorney, via email, made a settlement compromise offer. He agreed to remove the center dormer at his own expense. The remaining overall height as constructed would remain. Community members met on October 24th to discuss the proposed resolution. All in attendance agreed that removal of the center dormer would satisfy the community's concerns about the zoning violation. While removing the dormer, would not address the overall height violation, it would greatly mitigate its visual impact. 
The House would, ne would then resemble the plan that was shown to and approved by community members in 2016. Most importantly, it would go a long way to healing the violation of trust felt by the community. On November 8th, Garrett Hillians were assured by township personnel that the dormer removal was to be part of the settlement and possibly a welcome to Garrett Hill sign as well. As recently as November 22nd, community members were told by the solicitor that a written resolution would be presented to the Board of Commissioners at their next meeting. He was asked to forward that written proposal to the community. No mention was made of any changes to the proposed resolution that was already on the table. No one saw fit to inform community members that the removal of the dormer was no longer part of the proposed settlement. We had to find that out by reading the published Board of Commissioners agenda packet last Thursday. I think this was unconscionable. So what happened? The community was tasked with reaching a resolution with Mr. Brasso by the Zoning Hearing Board, by John Rice, by Bob Zinkowski, by our own commissioner. Therefore, for all intents and purposes, by the board. And we did. It very simply and solely involved removal of the center dormer, something that David Brasso said he would be willing to do. I understand that it is ultimately the board's decision as to what the final resolution will be in this matter. What I do not understand is why it seems that you have chosen to disregard the hard work and efforts of Garrett Hillians in exchange for money. The board may believe that taking the money is in the best interests of Garrett Hill and the township. I assure you, it is not. Please do not violate Garrett Hill's trust. This proposed re resolution will set a precedent, despite assurances to the contrary. There's already a business owner in Garrett Hill who says he's, he's going to build higher and pay the fine. If Mr. Brasso can do it, so can he. This is not what Garrett Hillians want. It's been stated time and again that they want to preserve and enhance Garrett Hill, keep it the same, and foster redevelopment. That was the guiding principle behind the Garrett Hill Zoning District documents. That concern, that goal, was why so many Garrett Hillians participated in the process. Garrett Hill is a unique, distinct, family-oriented neighborhood. Please keep it that way. Garrett Hillians have been nothing but upfront and communicative throughout these last 10 months. They acted reasonably, responsibly, and respectfully. The community has done everything that's been asked of them and more, and this is the result. The board's proposed resolution is to have the Garrett Hill community's negotiated settlement disregarded and ignored. Does the community now have to endure not only the violation of its zoning ordinance, but also the violation of their trust by our elected officials as well? Please don't squander this opportunity to allow good governance to prevail. I respectfully request that you table item 6B from tonight's agenda. Please renegotiate this settlement so that it reflects the Garrett Hill community's resolution with Mr. Brasso. Garrett Hillians have worked too long and too hard to see their efforts flush down the drain. Please forget about the money. Please let's settle on the removal of the center dormer. I thank you for your service to Radnor Township, and I implore you to reconsider. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Please. Hi. Um, I just wanted to kind of respond to that, actually, also. Is, um, my name is Sue Manth Joseph. I live at 117 Garrett Avenue since 2004. Um, again, uh, Sean pointed out that there's only two of us here that actually are actually living right next door in the same overlay district uh, of this. But the, what the Garrett Hill Coalition failed to mention is they say that they did this all collectively with our input. And basically it was Andy, the business owners, we were all kind of just, we were allowed to come into their meetings, but our input really didn't matter because nothing we actually requested actually was impl implemented in that Garrett Hill zoning to the point where I think if you actually read the zoning code, if you look at it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't even make sense. And if you actually ask anyone in our, within our 20 homes that were affected by it, and we were converted to Garrett Hill neighborhood, first time in US history, someone created their own zoning code without even zoning experience. 
And if you ask any of those neighbors when they bought any of their properties in the last nine years what, they, what their zoning is for their house, they won't tell you it's Garrett Hill neighborhood because they have no idea. And if they don't have any idea, how, I imagine the people who've been there before that, who we were kind of forced into it, we really didn't have a say. Um, and, and sure, I, I think this is a good resolution because legally he could actually go to Delaware County and have all this reversed and it would cost the town taxpayer, taxpayers of Radnor Township money. And at the same time, back again, if you look at that Garrett Hill zoning, most of the homes are non-compliant with the new zoning code that they came up with. And for some reason, they're, they're, they're going on this high horse saying that it's not, I think they're just upset that you know, we're not following their code. But honestly, if we went back to get our original C1 commercial and everyone else was R5, there wouldn't be any of this issue. We wouldn't have had any, uh, and people could build the way they wanted to and improve their properties and families could move in. But people are saying they wanted to stay the same yet improve. That doesn't even make sense. If you have to improve, things have to change. If you actually walk through Garrett Hill neighborhood or Garrett Hill or Garrett Avenue, if you look at the homes, they aren't in the greatest shape, except for these two, these few homes. Steve Bay just built up some nice properties right next door to him. These two, these two uh, twins came in. And on the other side, there's one home on the other side of the bridge that was just built. And that's pretty tall. And if they were in their overlay district, you know, they, they would be nonconforming too. What I also find interesting is none of the members who are part of the Garrett Hill uh, Coalition, none of their properties are affected by the zoning, which I think is really funny because if you want to implement it on their properties, I want to see them accept it and take it and say, oh, it's going to be beneficial to them. But they don't. They make it look like it was a community thing and it wasn't. We were all forced, our throats were forced down into it. And, and, I, and I, that's not right at all. They, it's funny how they can implement, they want to implement their law upon other people, but they don't want to eat it either. And if, if you look at that zoning and, and I don't, and um, Rick Barker, I remember even mentioned saying his reasoning for the way this overlay district should be is because it was a gradual um, a thing, tapering of businesses to residents. And that's not true at all because there's residences, there's residences and businesses on both sides. You've got barber shops on one side, you've got actual businesses on the other side. It's not, and, and there's all residences from the beginning to the end. So it's not any blending, it's not you know, a gradual um, uh, uh, um, flow uh, of, of the type of residence. It's, it's all mixed. So either they should have given us all mixed use or made us all R5, but that would have been the fair thing to do. But it just seems really weird that they picked these 20 homes and said, let's make up our own zoning code on them and give everybody else mixed use on the other side of the, empty, which was called the empty lot, which before this house was built was just an empty lot with people just parking their cars any which way they wanted. That's what it was. And it's, it was like that for almost, what, 19 years. <laughs> and, and for some reason, they didn't have a problem with that. I, I don't get that. So, uh, you know, I took my whole thing of getting bullied by them. I got bullied. It got so bad, even to the point where um, I had to have a, a, a zoning board uh, official, she, she had to recuse herself for this hearing when I challenged the township. And the only reason they bullied me and nobody else was because only my name was the only name on that suit. That was it. And there was other people who backed me up on that. And they, they did it since then. And the fact that they're doing it then and they're doing this now, every time I spoke up against it, I got bullied. And the, the whole zoning, how, how they even came up with it, I don't even get it. Why? I mean, the whole zoning even came about, the overlay district came about from a $50,000 grant that wasn't meant for uh, beautifying the area around the R100 air, trolley area. Not, not what they, somehow Rick Barker took over and convinced uh, a, plan, uh, you know, a zoning, um, uh, a planning company to create their own zoning code, with, which in fact effectively destroyed my value of my property and the business owners as well. But just something like that to keep in mind. Maybe we should just kind of start back and get rid of this. If we went back to the original zoning, I think everyone would be happy. And 
I think it would cost us a lot less money in the long run in terms of situations like this and also increasing the value of our homes. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional public comment this evening? Hi, this is Nancy Leimwand. I served on the Garrett Hill uh, Committee that- Nancy, could you make sure you speak into the microphone? Sorry, Nancy Leimwand, I, um, I served on the committee that developed the zoning. We were charged with that, peace be this Sumat and, 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 and Jim, Jim, Jim Cornelio, Cornelia. 135 Bark Lane Road. I have a display. Um, I so also served on the nine-member implementation committee that did the uh, Garrett here overlay. Uh, we served for th three three years together. I think we were a few of the uh, members that served all three years together. Right. Um, I'm not going to take time here. I just have a couple comments. So the dormer is in the front of the building and it comes right up to the front of the building within a few feet of the street so when you stand there it looms if you sorry the dormer because it, it's at the front of the building when you stand right in front of the building it's just 10 feet the whole height is right smack above you if you remove the dormer the height the full height of the house is at the peak, peak of the pitch which is 30 feet back it has a totally different feel it's completely useful to remove the dormer because it will not have that looming feel plus it was what the seven people who were party to the zoning hearing board hearing um, wanted and not and the people who participated in the public meeting wanted and what we understood was agreed to by Brasso so um, this is a novel solution I realize you guys have to make decisions um, I have one other a couple of other points uh, just the reason I brought the map in. There is no lot in Garrett Hill, neighborhood in the mixed use or in the business district, that can be developed under any standard Radnor Township zoning. No R1 to 5, no C1. The lots are too small. They're very small. The street is very narrow. The major limit to uh, most of our uh, redevelopment is parking. There's only one way to solve that, which is to assemble lots the way Villanova University does when it wants to change uses and it wants to change the, the scale. Um, it's not possible to develop a 4,500 square foot lot into a major property. The, you could argue that the, that the height limit is arbitrary if you want, but the height limit enables a good balance between the square footage of the house, the number of bedrooms, and the provision of adequate parking and adequate stormwater management. These are existing conditions. It has nothing to do with the will of the committee. It's something that a new provision, zoning provision would have to deal with if it were, in, were developed. And it should be respected because of the amount of time and effort and resources that have been put into it. Um, I think that's all. You got to want to? Yeah, a few, a few things. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, the the Garrett Hill the overlay Garrett Hill Garrett Hill overlay process involved two years of of public meetings. Um, they were almost they were monthly meetings. They were we we sent out leaflets. Everyone got a leaflet when the next meeting was. We had hundreds of people participate, um, including one of uh, Mr. Joseph, who you know he was there frequently. I. I think Mr. Joseph has a very distorted view of historically of what happened then. Um, we came to the commissioners uh, after two years and it was uh, uh, someone made a objection and we went back to the drawing board in another year of meetings and finally after three years it was approved. Um, what I'm hearing, I, I think this is, I came here because I asked that you table this motion um, for the reasons that uh, uh, Patty Barker mentioned. But w what I'm hearing is really a frontal attack on, the, on what has already been approved, the Garrett Hill overlay. Uh, Mr. Joseph says, you know, scrap it. Uh, uh, Sean, y your, your comments clearly indicate, you know, get rid of it. It's not, it's not good enough. This is about the rule of law. We passed the ordinance three years of, of public meetings countless hearings before the commissioners. The commissioners finally approved it in 2009. We asked that that remain. I mean, that's really not an issue here. What is an issue is 
the next best thing to enforcing it by eliminate, you know, making the roof be, the building be in compliance with the 30 foot restriction, the next best thing is to get rid of this dormer. Uh, Rich, you said that you don't, reasonable people can disagree that you don't think by, by, by eliminating that front dormer it's gonna make much of a difference. You know, I disagree. I think a lot of the people here disagree that eliminating that dormer is going to visually have less of an impact. So we can't have full compliance with the ordinance which was passed by the board in 2009, the next best thing is, is, is to eliminate that dormer. So I would ask, respectfully ask uh, the commissioners to table this, uh, or it looks like you're gonna vote on it, but I would ask that it be defeated and, and uphold you know, the Garrett Hill ordinance that was passed with a great deal of effort on the part of a lot of people from Garrett Hill and um, you know, has now been an ordinance since 2009. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any additional public comment? Oh, I, I'm sorry, we're we'll gonna let, oh, your glasses, okay, sure, go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, um, Matt Marshall, 228 Walnut Avenue, former planning commissioner, former interim commissioner, first ward. Um, firstly, I'd like to uh, thank both uh, Commissioner Nagel and Clark for their time on the board. Um, why I came to speak this evening was about this very topic, and I know Mr. Booker said there's no precedent here, but there is a precedent here. In July of 2012, there was a very similar uh, building development at 219 Poplar Avenue in what happens to be the most historic subdivision in the United States, nationally recognized historic district. There has been decades of discussion about the zoning and the comprehensive plan in Radnor Township. Uh, there has been multiple land use applications, both in Garrett Hill and in Wayne and other areas of the township. And we're coming upon this like none of that existed before Garrett Avenue. It has, and it's created, um, it's created a lot of stress within uh, the community, neighbors to neighbors. It's obviously created issues for the township. Uh, but, but the core issue here is not about the house being built or what the settlement should be. It's about the permit that was issued for the, for the house. There has to be more comprehensive review of your ordinances and how the building permit gets issued. Uh, Jake Abel said 219 Poplar, that was seven and a half years ago. The permit was issued without a proper review and the developer built a house that was too big for the lot, has created a lot of controversy within a very historic neighborhood, but the same thing has happened for uh, the neighbors in Garrett Hill. And I was part of the planning commission, by the way, when the overlay district came before us, and it was two years. And I sat where you're sitting tonight, listening to all the neighbors' input. So it's not like this just came about and poof, we have something to change. Um, my recommendation would be to take the settlement because it sounds like the developer probably has uh, a very good um, position and case law to win. You, you may not get anything out of this unless you take the settlement. But secondly, you have to address the permitting process. That's, that's why we're all here right now. The permit was issued as it was at 219 Poplar without comprehensive review. And that goes back to the township. So I would say take your settlement, but then go back and review how these plans get approved because that's the core issue of what you're talking about tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening? Good evening. My name is Vicki List. I live at 250 Beachwood Drive. First of all, I wanna thank you all because it takes an awful lot to get me to stand up in public and talk. 
Um, I would like to hear an explanation from the lawyer of the township who already told us uh, that what we came up with in the meetings we had was going to be presented. And then we were told that, in fact, uh, Mr. Brasso agreed to remove the dormer. I'd like to hear what actually happened in the conversation that are in your mind that ended up disregarding totally what the township, uh, what the community had uh, come up with as, and we were tasked to come up with something, um, came up with for a settlement. I, I really feel we, we, we are owed some sort of explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening? Good evening. Hi, I'm Robin Mann. I live at 266 Beachwood Drive, but I'm here uh, to read the comments of Roberta uh, Winters, who could not be here this evening. Um, she lives at 326 Williams Road, Rosemont. Um, here today, gone tomorrow. That's what some Garrett Hill residents are thinking. After several community meetings, deliberation, and discussion, Mr. Brasso said he was willing to remove the front dormer to the too tall 131 to 133 Garrett Avenue, Garrett Hill property. This uh, agreement would maintain the character of our tight-knit neighborhood as provided by our overlay district. This zoning represents our commitment to preserve the past and shape the future. We had every reason to believe that the unsightly, oversized facade that was here today would be gone tomorrow maybe even to, would be gone, maybe tomorrow. With the, with the publication of tonight's agenda, it looks like the desired resolution has been sold to the township for $10,000. We live with the travesty of a non-compliant property and get little compensation, if any, except for a fine. What is $10,000 that is earmarked perhaps for Garrett Hill in a $35 million township budget? It's here today and gone tomorrow. Elected and appointed officials are here today and gone tomorrow. In transient communities, residents are often here today and gone tomorrow. Garrett Hill prides itself with multi-generational families who have built and continue to build a legacy in our community. We do not come and go. We now have a too tall building dormer that has come. We wish it would go. We implore the, bill of the Board of Commissioners to table tonight's agenda item 6B. Please try to arrive at a settlement that reflects the will and agreement of the Garrett Hill residents who are here today and will be here tomorrow too. Thank you. And just on my own behalf, I'd like to say that um, selective enforcement of laws seems to be in vogue lately at all levels of government, but that's not the way government is supposed to work. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on this issue? Good evening. D. Delaney, 229 Williams Road in Garrett Hill. Um, I just wanted to add uh, from a conversation that I had with Kathy Bogosian after the meeting in September where we were trying to come up with uh, a list of conditions that we wanted to negotiate with Mr. Brasso. And um, I, I talked to her specifically as she was leaving the meeting, and she said it, she, first thing she said right off was the dormer should go, and that, that it would help architecturally uh, remove the um, feeling of being overwhelmed by having this huge structure so close to the street. By moving the dormer back, the uh, roof line recedes, and it's not as a towering psychological, emotional kind of uh, structure. Um, and uh, I have a lot of respect for Kathy Bogosian. She certainly knows a lot more than I do about architecture and good planning. And that was her feelings at that time as well. The other uh, issue that I just would like to address to uh, Commissioner Farhi. Um, I don't know who you spoke with. You talked about speaking to all the members of the community and of the group and everything. I never heard anything. I never saw you when I went to vote. Um, I, I would just simply appreciate that if you are actually considering doing away with or are not considering the existing zoning that is on Garrett, that you really call all members of the community together and discuss your feelings further and see really what all of the community has to, not just a selective group that you might speak with. So those are the two, yes? No, I mean, I'm, if I can, no. No? Okay, 
thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any additional public comment this evening? Okay. Oh, please, that's fine. Take your time. Hi, my name is Reggie Day. I live at uh, 153 Lowry's Lane. Uh, I am a, I live two houses away from uh, uh, your property. Okay, so uh, I've lived in Garrett Hill since 1977. So I think I qualify as a kind of a long-term resident. That's more than half of my life. Uh, I don't live on Garrett Avenue. I live in Garrett Hill. It's a neighborhood. It's not a two-street zoning area. We're a community. And in any community, what happens to one property happens to all. What happens to one resident happens to all. Um, I was an ancillary part of the uh, Garrett Hill overlay process. Uh, my wife was far more involved and she warned me not to say anything tonight. Because uh, I do speak from the heart. Uh, I wasn't born with that gene filter. So forgive me if I step overboard. Uh, because I coach um, out of the area quite a bit during the day, uh, and there are some other issues why, but every night I come home to 153 Lowry's Lane. Uh, I go through Garrett Avenue quite frequently, uh, just for walks and for travel. And as a resident, I know the building. And I wondered, as it was being built, why? Uh, I heard a little bit earlier that uh, I believe you, you said that, uh, well, there were uh, problems on both sides. I don't know what two sides you're talking about made the problems. Near as I can figure, the architect made a mistake. That's a mistake made by somebody's group coming into the community to build something there. The other mistake was made by the Zoning Commission. That's you guys. They're under you. I believe in chain of command. What's the other side? We didn't make a mistake. The Garrett Hill residents, either on Garrett Avenue or in the Garrett Hill community, we did nothing. What we did was nine years ago, with your blessing, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, why isn't it working for the people? You are our employees. You don't arbitrarily discipline your employees. That's what you're doing if you pass this tonight. There was an agreement made that you wanted us to do. We made the agreement. Dormer's gone. End of conversation. But then again, and I know this stuff because I taught government for 42 years. Maybe it was an executive meeting or not. I don't know. But that agreement that was fully made and fully agreed upon by both of the opposing parties, not by you, but by the two opposing parties that you wanted them to work out, that agreement is being totally ignored. 
and for not 30 pieces of silver, but for $10,000. Is that what the future of Garrett Hill is worth? $10,000. Not everybody in Garrett Hill is in agreement, but the vast, vast majority of the Garrett Hill people worked very hard to get an ordinance passed which you, not you individually, but you as a board approved and made law. If you let one little bit of law go, that's it. One little hole sinks the ship. And if you're going to give one little variance here, Unfortunately, a lot more is going to go. All it takes is one little loose board on the hull of a ship that you let go, and you better damn well learn how to swim. We elected you to take care of us, to make sure that our laws our ordinances are followed. That's your job, not ours. Please, live up to your responsibility that you have sworn to us. That's your job to do tonight. And that oath that you guys all took, and ladies, I'm sorry, is worth one hell of a lot more than $10,000. Thank you. Any additional public comment this evening? All right. Thank Wait, you Commissioner Brodsky, I, I would, I, I'm happy to make a motion to continue with the legal uh, battle and to, and where are we right now? We're still in common pleas court on this, John, with Brasso? So I, I'm, I'm happy to continue this. So one thing I want to say is nobody is abrogating. Nobody disagrees with the zoning. We're going to enforce the zoning from now. And the, the zoning is in place. And we are your representatives. And the staff works for the township at our direction. There's no question the buck stops here. Our, the township is failed to, to enforce the law as it exists, and that is unfortunate, and we own it. It's our mistake. And what we can do now is we can continue to battle and get a court to force the developer to reduce the size, to conform with the zoning, even though the township made a mistake, and I'm happy to vote for that. I will say I agree with our solicitor that as a legal matter, our chances of winning are very slim. But I'll, I will agree to spend the money if we want to do that. I also will agree to do the settlement, and the settlement is not just the dormer. There's also other elements of the settlement, including um, various deed restrictions and, and other points, which all have been encompassed. The difference being here is some remuneration to the township for the area. And really, I think it's probably a good deal that the, the money is directed to Garrett Hill. It's not going to the rest of the township. And, you know, for one of my projects, the money came in. It went outside of my, Booker, my zoning. Booker, but, Commissioner Booker, but, but is it your intent to make my, a motion? So, yes, my intent to make a motion. I'll make a motion if I, and see if we get a second, okay? I'll make a motion. I'll, I move that we continue with the legal challenge and do not enter into this settlement, but continue uh, to uh, common pleas court to have the case tried and um, to enforce zoning as in currently is in 
on the books for Radnor. So I, I vote to continue with the legal battle on this, and I make that motion and put it up for a second. Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of second. All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of approving the uh, settlement agreement with DJB Properties and David Brasso, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion passes five to two. Thank you very much. Moving on, we now are at ordinance, we are at ordinance 2019-12, adoption of the final 2020 comprehensive budget by setting the township real estate tax millage rate and adopting appropriations for 2020. Uh, Mr. White. Madam President, if I may. Certainly, Mr. Zinkowski. Um, what we'd like to do is, I know in this year's budget, the capital projects, uh, there is no money in there this year for those projects. However, there are a number of ongoing projects taking place. And if the board would so allow, we have a list of those that I'll ask our township engineer to step through quickly. Thank you. Is there going to be something on the screen or? Yes, we just it's coming. Yeah, okay. It's coming. <laughs> All right, thanks. I wasn't sure what we were waiting for. Okay, I'll be very brief. Clem McCrone Park, this project was completed. Uh, Bo Connor and Warren Phillip Home Parks should be completed this week. Emblem Tunnel Park Comfort Station, uh, that actually was the comfort station kit was delivered today. And before the board tonight is a resolution to award the construction of said kit. Anki Park Improvements previously completed. Fenimore Woods Park Improvements, 65% design is complete. Ethan Valley Park improvements, uh, the parking lot and Stone Park has been addressed and we're looking at the scope is under review by the township. Township building improvements, uh, the finance construction and basement storage was completed in November. The other building security improvements are scheduled for completion next year. Public Works garage lift, this equipment has been ordered and is scheduled for installation in spring. Madsen Ford Road pedestrian bridge, this project was completed in November. Radnor Fire Company preemption improvement. Uh, we have a cost proposal for getting that work done, which will before, be before the board in January. King of Prussia Eagle Road Pine Tree. Grant document submitted. We're meeting with Cabrini and uh, the other university to kick that project off, Cabrini and Eastern, this week. Lancaster Avenue, that's actually East South Wayne, North Wayne, Lancaster. Feasibility study was initiated in September. We're waiting for final results. Uh, Lancaster Avenue traffic adaptive. We did not receive the grant. We're going to be speaking with PennDOT to see what we need to do to go on the next round of grants. Wayne Business Overlay District parking area and tree replanting. That project was completed in November. That was two weeks ahead of the schedule. Rosemont Garrett Hill Gateway Enhancement. Uh, we did have a meeting on that. We now have to work with PennDOT, SEPTA, and PICO, as well as our Garrett Hill residents, to further that project along. Conestoga Road Tunnel Lighting going out for bid today, or I'm sorry, Friday. Morris Road Streetscape, we're at 50% design. King of Prussia Glen Mary, our consultant is responding to PennDOT Highway Occupancy Permit comments. Barley Cone Sidewalk, we just received the proposal Friday. I've sent that back uh, with comments to the consultant. Poplar Avenue, Gilmore is providing revised plans to the township. Uh, North Wayne Avenue uh, Sidewalk from Eagle Road to Woodsworth Court. Again, Gilmore is addressing PennDOT comments. Cowan and Odorisio Parks, the township is reviewing options and bidding these projects for that work. Radnor Trail Extension. Grant funding agreements are being developed by Campbell Thomas. Harford Park Trail, that went out to bid Thursday. Radnor Tap Trail, uh, we're going to be meeting Thursday with DVRPC and PennDOT to discuss the right-of-way documents uh, along with the solicitor. So, thank you. Madam President, that demonstrates that there is a lot of projects that have been approved by the board 
and we are working towards uh, completing those. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that rundown. It's good to know the, uh, the money from the bond that we approved. Uh, that work is getting done, and those projects are, are nearing completion or at least starting. Good, good and helpful update. Okay, um, so ordinance 2019-12, uh, may I get a motion to adopt the final 2020 comprehensive budget? So moved. Second. All right, um, Mr. White, do you have? Yeah, just very briefly, um, as the board is very well aware, uh, this, this budget uh, started coming together in January of 2019. The board has met uh, in just about each of the months on special topics to discuss uh, some of the major aspects that went into this. Uh, and in the last two months, the board has discussed this at each of its uh, regularly scheduled meeting as well as having special meetings added to the agenda uh, with uh, going through in uh, pretty exhaustive detail. So um, I'd like to thank the board for your time I know a lot of this stuff is pretty dry and not the most exciting stuff, but here we are. Um, what has changed from what was introduced at the last meeting based on the direction given by the board is that the, the millage uh, adjustment for 2020 was reduced down to 0.25 mils. Um, the document itself, the budget document, which is, uh, was published up on the website, uh, was amended to remove any of the references where a dedicated fire fund was being created. Uh, those contributions to the fire companies will continue to be made out of the general fund as they have been um, uh, basically forever since the township's been contributing to those fire companies. Uh, the amounts are the same as they were uh, included in the original uh, draft of the budget, uh, which um, would be giving the fire companies uh, all of the monies that were requested. Um, and then the other element is that uh, there was uh, net revenue forecasted for the end of 19. Uh, the, the discussion coming out of the special meeting in mid-November was is, uh, to identify some projects, capital projects that that could go towards. Uh, however, with the millage reduction, uh, in order to meet cash balance uh, requirements, uh, the net revenue uh, will just be kept in the general fund and some of that will be used to pay for the uh, couple hundred thousand dollar deficit that the 2020 budget uh, is showing right now. Um, so those capital projects will just remain on the list and something that we'll tackle going forward. All right, thank you very much, Mr. White. Um, is there any commissioner comment to ordinance 2019-12? Bill, the, the increase in millage is intended to raise how much? The revenue will be a, a little over 800000 much? How much do we currently have in general reserves, the, the reserve fund? The general fund reserves here, let me pull it up. Um, again, these are the live spreadsheets, so I do apologize if it's a little small. Um, at the end of 19, we're forecasted to have about $9.6 uh, which is about 26% of general fund expenditures, and the fund balance policy is 25%. So by using some of that uh, fund balance next year with, to cover the, the $261,000 deficit, we would end 2020 right about 25%, which would meet the fund balance policy. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I just think... You know, hearing from residents, and we're carrying nine, you know, take the number 9.6, 9.3. Um, I mean, we should be leveraging that fund instead of raising taxes again on, on residents. Um, I, mean, I, I, I know that's a policy to keep 25%, but having 9 million in reserves and, and going out and raising taxes on, on residents, I, I, I just, I, I can't do it. Is, is that $9 million all unallocated, or is that that's just general reserve? Is it, is it in certain funds? Is there a combination? Or that's just in the general fund? That's just in the general fund. Well, why, why wouldn't we spend that down and not raise taxes? 25% is just a policy. It's not a law. 
Well, it is and, an and ordinance. Right, that and right now, now is a good time to use it because we're sh we have a bad year with our. It is a law. It's an ordinance. It's 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 our policy. No, it's an ordinance. But we can, we can always go back and retroactively change the. Ordinance. We we can adjust the ordinance. Yeah, it's our it's our it's our rule twenty five percent. So it's why true, do why do law. why do we carry twenty five percent? So I can't remember when was that ordinance enacted. Was I on the board at the time? I think it was before me, wasn't it? Uh, I don't recall. I think it was you know, just before me, 20, 2013, I think. Could be. Um, but. Uh, John says it before that. So why would we carry $9 million of the taxpayers' money never ever to be used? It's there to, to smooth out when there's, when there's dips in revenue, so we have something to, that we don't need to uh, drastically raise the taxes. So again, this is the time when we would use that reserve. The, the history with the fund balance policy goes back to one of those years, 2012, 13, 14. I can't remember either. I'd have to go back through the files. but. Um, it was uh, an issue that the board at the time had assigned to CARFAC to look at. Uh, in doing the analysis, um, the, the Government Finance Officers Association of America, that's the, the, the most um, recognized authority in government finance, uh, their recommendation is at a minimum 15% uh, of annual expenditures within the general fund. Uh, the additional 10, and so the policy actually stipulates 15 percent. Uh, however, because the township is heavily reliant on the business tax portion or the business tax revenues, uh, the policy was written that if the business tax revenues exceed 30 percent of general fund revenues, then an additional 10 percent in fund balance would be kept in the fund uh, to mitigate the risk of large fluctuations in that revenue. And 10 years ago, uh, in one year, the business taxes dropped by close to $4 million. So um, it was not un unreasonable to assume or to, to uh, try to mitigate against a risk like that. So that's, that's how we got to 25%. Um, the 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 9.3 million is a, is a function of the the amount of expenditures, uh, and at the end of the day, yes, you the board could definitely spend some of that down. Uh, we could spend 800 and uh, whatever thousand down uh, and not do the tax increase. We have been uh, put on notice by Moody's during the last bond issue that the consecutive years of deficits have. Have, um, have will not help our uh, rating going forward if that's important to the board. Um, and just the financial flexibility of being able to do emergency projects, if we're going to run the sewer fund in a deficit, we're going to have to have millions in the general fund uh, to pay for those projects as they go uh, and other major infrastructure projects that we don't have separate funding for. Uh, it, if there is an emergency needed, uh, it's not that unreasonable for a project to be uh, a million plus overnight. Uh, so the, the amount is large. I don't disagree with that. Um, uh, but it is uh, good financial practice. It's one that prior boards took into consideration and ultimately decided that that was a, a reasonable amount, and that's why the, the ordinance was adopted. And if we pull that money out of the general fund at this point, that doesn't solve our problem moving forward. That only we then we have to hope and pray that what the business privilege tax uh, goes up or the, the revenue from that goes up and we can recoup that cost the next year. And looking at the trends, that's not something that we can count on. We could also rationalize spending. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The board could definitely but, but start cutting I, and back I hear on you, services. But the nine million dollars. Excuse me. Like, excuse me. I asked a question, and Mr. White did we, we not. Never, Rich, I was asking a question. No, I. Yeah, I asked a question excuse first. Excuse me. I, I asked just a question. asked a question. Pardon me. I asked the question about no. the nine million. Rich, please, and Bill just answered that, and I asked another question. <laughs> I, Do you I mind? wasn't done. Excuse I had follow-ups. Well, I, I had follow-up. Uh, okay, you follow have questions. Your, you'll have an opportunity for that. I'm sorry. Mr. White. Which, uh, which question am I answering? <laughs> to, my que I, to my question around the business privilege tax. 
well, and yeah, the revenues I, it, it, from we, it. And we've talked about it quite a bit in these meetings. Um, yeah, the, it's the, it's the uh, unpredictability of that revenue group that makes, that puts so much stress on the fund balance. Uh, if, and that's why the additional 10% was added to the fund balance policy. So um, you are correct that if, if we elect to keep millage rates where they are, we should align expenses to meet whatever that revenue amount is. Um, so, um, and actually the fund balance policy does stipulate uh, that the board would have a year or two, I think, to, to rebuild back to um, the 25% if you elect to keep 25%. Um, so those would have to be the discussions next year is uh, if, if we're not willing to adjust revenue, then what on the expense side needs to go? Uh, I think it would just be an amendment to an ordinance, so just a... The ordinance, well, we could change the ordinance, or the ordinance already has provision to do that, but it requires a supermajority. I'd have to go into the actual ordinance. I don't have it memorized. Looking at it now. Yeah. Let me, let me, I don't have that part memorized. But again, the point is that we have that very large fund balance in reserve for situations like the one we're faced with this year where we have a drop uh, in those uh, tax revenues. And so this is, this is exactly what it's for to use. And also, we never, $9 million, we, we've never come close to utilizing all of that in, in a year. And plus, we also have bond funds that are available that, um, we're working on, and, and even when we did have a million dollar repair and King of Pressure Road sanitary sewer repair, we, we ended up that and other projects, we borrowed the money, we, we borrowed, no, we took note, we issued notes and then refinanced those notes. So what we, in essence, what we have is $9 million that's sacred and never touched, and that's money that we have taken from the, ta from the taxpayers, and it's, we should use it or we should give it back. By comparison, the school district only keeps about 8%, not 25%. And, and so... Well, the makeup of the school's revenue is a lot more predictable in that it's almost entirely uh, understood. real estate tax. Understood, but it's a, much, it's a much bigger... Yeah, and their 8% is a whole lot more than ours. It, 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 it is bigger, but it's a, it's a lower, lower overall, it's a lower percentage of the revenue. So, uh, again, I, I would... I would join with Commissioner Abel and move that we uh, draw down on reserve to uh, eliminate any tax increase. Madam President. Yes, Mr. Sankowski. I guess the concern I have is why didn't we hear about this several months ago that this was an option? I didn't know that there was nine million in there. I did not know it. Never knew it. You, you never knew that? Nope. Jake told me uh, last night. Oh, you know, there's $8 million? I believe, nope, it, I, I, I believe it's I, updated constantly. I believe we went through this. During no, we talked about a million dollars. So, no. We talked about a million. Okay, so gentlemen, issue, we're not going to argue that. Oh, this, I agree. It's just but, that we're at, the, we're at the 11th hour. It'd have been nice if that was the case because you could then introduce legislation at that time. There's been plenty of conversations on this. If the issue was 0% tax increase, then someone should have said that and we could have worked on that. However, this is like the last minute well, let's go do something else or figure it out when we were meeting since January with options. The option is we can cut services. Just pick a service you'd like to cut. Leave collection. I, I, I can do that, but what I suggest let's just draw on the reserves. That's fine. But the option is, as you know, that... <laughs> I'm not saying to cut services. But also, too, it's troublesome that we would look at a policy where we're going to borrow for everything. We also have unfunded pension issues. We have millions and millions of dollars of projects we can't even come up with and fund. We're not even funding the fire department of their full requests of where this is going in the future. So the issue is, that's why we had all these meetings during the year. So we don't, we're now at the 11th hour and now we're gonna change all this stuff at this hour. Is where, where was this at, at earlier in all these previous meetings? Well, Bob, I just disagree. It's a big change. It's, it's well, then drawing right, should, from... It's then drawing, you should have said something. It's not changing any of the Gentlemen. stuff you just said. It's just drawing from that, that pool of money you have sitting there. Then we will look at the impacts for those decisions then that but, we'll have to live with, it, which but, is bond rating, which uh, goes back to the borrowing um, of money, 
which Moody's has already flagged so, us on that. So, but to, so, to Bob's point, can I can I respond to Bob? So, to Bob's point, I mean, we were raising. I, at least I was raising some of these concerns. Um, so we had an eight hundred thousand dollar gap. I mean, I was calling for cutting some of the community development that we're funding. Community groups. Um, so that was two meetings ago. So it's not waiting to the last moment. I was identifying areas where I thought we could cut. So we didn't have an $800,000 gap. Um, we're at the point now where I'm seeing $800,000. I don't want to raise taxes on, on residents. And we have $9 million in reserves. And I think it's appropriate to draw from that. And, and on top of that, you know, I would like this board to ask Carfact to look at the budget, see if we can find areas where we can cut and, and trim the budget. Um, so, so you're right. So if, so if revenues come in low next year, we don't have $800,000. We're not spending on all the community organizations, and we're not in this position. I think, so I think those kind of policy decisions would be better held, be held in this room with the Board of Commissioners. Um, and we could, hey, we have those discussions about service delivery and what those cost. Uh, this group knows best. We spend the time going through the budget and talking about it. If we're going to make decisions or recommendations on policy or on service delivery or, you know, funding pensions and OPEBs, um, and we, I think we learned with the last CARFAC group that, uh, that it, it, ultimately it's the board's decision, so we should have those kind of discussions in here. Just uh, so to the point on the community groups, we did have that discussion, you're right, and we did. I thought there was consensus from everyone here that we would keep the community groups funded at the same level. Uh, Commissioner Larkin, then we did add $5,000 for the Women's Resource Center, and then at our last meeting, I believe Commissioner Larkin, you suggested cutting the Radnor Historical Society by 5000 correct? So those were the discussions that I recall around the community groups. I don't recall saying cut out the community groups in order to try to bring down the $800,000 deficit. If I, and I, if that was something that we missed, I certainly apologize for that, but I don't think we did. Yeah, I, I, I think I identified there's duplication, especially in our senior services, that um, I think we can cut back Surrey services. I would, I, I recommended cutting that entirely. So that gets us 50. Okay. We added 38 to the 100 fund. We certainly so did. So we're mm -hmm. close to 100 there. So I thought that the consensus was at but our meeting. It was meeting. a majority, uh, not uh, unanimous. Uh, right. And well, also, I, and the, the same meeting, I suggested that we not fund the uh, OPEB um, this year. So, you know, so I, I there's, there's no question. There's many issues that we discussed and talked about reductions, and it simply wasn't the will of the majority of the board. But all that's passed now. All I'm saying is whatever's in there, there's plenty in that reserve, and that this is, this is the time to use the reserve. And we can make a plan to replenish it in conformity or change the uh, requirement in future meetings. It's, it's not a big deal. So is there um, consensus on the board that we, uh, Mr. White, at this late hour, um, if there is consensus on the board for that to be done, is that something that can be done? We have a motion in front of us. Why don't we continue the discussion of the motion and vote on it? I would say that we should look at this, and then if there's, I know that we spoke, um, down the road if there's a possibility for, to give something back or to revisit it, then we should do it. But this is what we have planned. This is what staff has planned. So we should proceed and then look at it, take what they have, uh, absorb it, and hopefully apply it to the next, next year's budget. And there is the provision, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, that we can reopen the budget 30 days into the new year um, after an election year because we will be seating a new board. Correct. Yes, okay. you can reopen the budget. The problem is, is we have to let the county know by the end of next week what the 2020 millage rate is going to be. So the board has to set that millage rate tonight. 
that, that's the issue is the millage rate, and that won't you will not be able to retract that once we set. So op reopening the budgets won't make any difference, and the millage is what my view is the important item, and that's my goal was to not increase the millage by drawing on reserves. All right, well, we have a motion, uh, and the motion is the adoption of the final 2020 budget, which is was laid out, and uh, it was introduced at our last meeting, and um, that is what is currently on the table. So anything, I'm sorry, Commissioner Party, do you have something you want to say? All right, is there any other commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? Any public comment? All right, I will call the vote. All those in favor of adopting Ordinance 2019-12, the final 2020 comprehensive budget, by setting the real estate tax millage rate and adopting appropriations for 2020, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Opposed. A point of order. A motion Can passes, excuse me, motion passes five to two. Can we get, what is the percentage increase, what's the tax increase to the uh, constituents? I'll uh, just bear with me a couple seconds. We'll get that right up there. Come on. Yeah, yeah let me, is let it me all right? Arm Russell, excel okay. here. And all right, we'll then I will go ahead and move along to Ordinance 2019-13, adoption of the 2020 sanitary sewer rate. May I get a motion to adopt? Second. Okay. Um, Yeah, I mean, the uh, so the plan is, as we uh, had stated, the plan is to uh, raise the sanitary sewer rate by 10%, um, which completes the three years of um, rate increases that were decided, um, I guess, in 2017. Um, so that's what we have before us when it comes to the sanitary sewer. Um, that is what was uh, introduced at our last meeting and is there any commissioner comment to that my recollection was that the board voted and approved with my vote uh, in the negative to have two 10 percent increases I don't remember three okay and in light of a 6% or more tax increase, and I apologize, I missed last meeting, so I missed the introduction to this. Mm -hmm. But the, we have a 6% tax increase, and then to have a 10% increase in sanitary sewer fees, it's, it's burdensome on the taxpayers when they will also be facing uh, a school district tax increase as well as likely a, a county tax increase. So I, I would um, implore to this board to, to take it easy on our taxpayers and to not have a 10% increase in the sewer fees and to have a heart and to think about those in our community that are on fixed income and those with, at this time of Christmas with less means who don't want to pay these taxes. We should give more of the township and, and okay, not increase the tax. Any other commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? 
to the um, adoption of the 2020 sanitary sewer rate. C can you refresh my recollection, Bill, or anyone about three? In it was was two. We said two increases at 10 percent. No, it was three. And I voted against it, as I recall. It was three. It was three years. It was three. And this is the third year. Uh, all right. Is there any staff comment? Is there any public comment? All right, I will call the vote. All those in favor of adopting the 2020 sanitary sewer rate, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion passes five to two. Right. Ordinance 2019- If I, I'm sorry. What, do you want me, is now a good time to jump back? Sure, please. Because Excel jump woke back. up and uh, opened eight copies or eight versions of this one spreadsheet. Um, so we have a calculator that um, at 0.25 mils, uh, for the average taxpayer, it's going to be about 80. For the median, uh, 67. So, you know, between uh, 560 and 670 a month uh, per month to generate that 811,000 in additional revenue. Yeah, the the 60, the 80 dollars or 67 uh, is the annual number. So the annual increase for the median valued home is $67.48. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I don't want, it's been a few years since we really talked about it, but when we take a look at the, the range and assessed values in the township, it, we have 90, um, what's that, seven, 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 almost 8,000 properties, uh, and we're getting, 90, almost 93% in this window. Uh, so that's why the median's a little bit more, again, every single person, their calculation is unique to them and, and that's really what matters to them. Uh, but when we're looking at the numbers in whole, uh, we're, you know, 93% of the houses in Radnor are less than uh, the 694 estimate or assessed value. So most folks are gonna pay that lower uh, that lower amount, the 67 versus the 80, because the 80 is capturing a couple very large assessed values that's skewing the number uh, higher than what most people are falling in at. Okay. Um, then I think moving forward in the new year, we need to uh, start talking about ways that we can uh, address um, the the issue of revenue. So well, one thing, on and we, we have talked about this in our meetings, is um, the less dependent we are on business taxes uh, would, I mean, similar to the schools, we wouldn't need such a large reserve. Or there, um, So the board could reconsider that 10% if, if we're more reliant on uh, an income that's as predictable as real estate taxes. All right, moving along. Uh, we have Ordinance 2019-14, Adoption of the Consolidated Fee Schedule for the Township Effective, G effective January 1st, 2020. Um, may I get a motion to approve or to adopt? So moved. Second. Yes. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on the adoption of the Consolidated Fee Schedule? So I just had one uh, thing I wanted to add, and I did I'll share this with Mr. McNellis and as well as Mr. Zinkowski and um, Mr. White earlier. I had some people who reached out to me around the bulk trash, the increase in the bulk trash. Um, and it was, it, and I'm wondering if, uh, so the people were saying the $50 was good. We were gonna raise that to 75 and people were one, and I had some people reach out about that. Um, and I'm wondering if we could do that maybe on a sliding scale. So item-wise, and that appears to be the way uh, I think Laura Marion does it. So like one to three items, it's $50, and then maybe anything over that, it's 75, instead of just going with the flat $75. So that was the only thing I that came out of, uh, from people who, some of my constituents. And we did take a look at that, um, and so the, when we take a look at how much it's, it costs to send our guys, our crews around town uh, on Wednesdays to do this pickup, it's a, it's a two-person crew. Uh, they're doing it roughly 45 weeks out of the year with holidays and other 
uh, interruptions to the program. So uh, historically, we've been about 1,200 1,200 calls for services or transactions. Uh, that's 2017 and 2018. Uh, so we've been somewhere around 1,200. So when you add the cost up and divide it by the, the roughly 1,200 calls, it's coming out to about $76. So it's um, the 75 would be a little bit closer to break even. Uh, <coughs> what we didn't really get a chance to talk about administratively is the concept of offering uh, a drop off in lieu of. Uh, paying the fee and having the township actually come out to the house, so which is um, another option that some of the townships offer. Yeah, but I don't. I don't want to speak to that because that's the logistics that uh, I think we would need to work out first. But in terms of where we came to with coming up with that number, this was the the arithmetic that that went into it. Okay. And so this would be as of January one that the new fees would go into. Yes, sir. So you can still schedule one for the under the old prices for 2018 for 2019. There's a there's in in December. One or two Wednesdays left. Yes. <laughs> All right, get your stuff picked up. Um, Remind me to call. That. Uh, All okay, right. So that was the only the only thing only question I have, but I do think we do we we should at least make an attempt to break even. Um, on those fees, but it would be good if we could investigate the possibility that maybe people could drop off. Um, and maybe you guys can report back on that in January if there's a way to make something like that work. I think also too, it would be good for the board to consider us with the um, yard waste pickup to go to that possibly as an on-call basis um, at the amount that we do drive around the township. Um, so there could be some savings too as well. So that'd be something for the board's conversation as well. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Any other comments on the adoption of the consolidated fee schedule? Any staff comment? Any public well, comment? One, one comment. We w talked about the bridge fee, John. What, what, what are, are we, people, when the truckers hit the bridge, we talked about having a higher fee for that. Did, did anything ever come for, we, we, we talked about 5,000, 15,000, and I think you basically had said, no, that's too much, it won't be upheld. But is there a thousand or two thousand? Is there any fee for our time and effort in cleaning up truck strikes at the bridges? I put an ordinance in front of the board that included that. But that was, you, it was very broad. But so there's nothing on this fee schedule? No. No. You have to have some kind of legislation to authorize it. I mean, these fees are authorized by your building code by your zoning code, by some other state law or code. So if you want to have some type of a cleanup response fee, you, you'd, you'd have to put together a piece of legislation. Where did that turn out? Didn't we have that conversation? I feel like we did that. Table it. No, we, we introduced, a, it was very broad, and it anywhere. didn't it didn't even say specifically truck strikes. It said basically, act, I can't even remember. It was cleanup, or res it was township response. Any kind of hazardous t type of a situation. Involved. Right, but this wasn't hazardous. It was just the no. police and the cleanup. It's not hazardous most of the time. These trucks, hit, it's mostly fiberglass and debris on the road and police time to block off and reroute traffic. I can recirculate that ordinance, and then if the board wants to scale it down, because it included some other things. Um, you know, recouping the costs. Um, but take a look at it, and then if you want to revisit it, we can revisit it. Yeah, definitely. I want to have a, a fee for bridge strikes and, and what it costs the township to clean up and to reroute traffic and to um, manage that when that happens. All right, let's add that to the list for 2020. Uh, resolution 2019-130, adopting a wage and salary schedule for 2020. May I, I get a motion to did adopt? Did we have a vote on the fee schedule? At, or we? Oh, did we vote? We, we did. We voted. We didn't? Oh, I'm sorry. We're still in discussion. I am sorry. Commissioner Richie Booker threw me a, off. Commissioner he Booker had off. a question. That, I'm sorry? Commissioner Booker had a question that <laughs> interrupted the <laughs> um, Interrupted my train of vote. thought. Um, all right, was there any additional commissioner comment on the fee schedule? Any staff comment on the fee schedule? 
Any public comment on the fee schedule? All right, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of adopting the consolidated fee schedule for the township effective January 1, 2020, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes 7 nothing. Resolution 2019-130, adopting a wage and salary schedule for 2020. And that would be again, Mr. White. Yes, uh, so this is part of our annual uh, budget package of legislation. Uh, the administrative code um, calls out that uh, a wage and salary schedule should be adopted annually. Uh, within the schedule, um, each of the positions is identified uh, along with what the 2020 uh, hourly rate will be. Uh, as we discussed throughout the budget process, our FOP uh, members and our rate members, uh, the increases for 2020 are set by collective bargaining agreements. So the, the wage and salary schedule here reflects that. Uh, for uh, non-union civilian folks, um, as has been in prior years, there is from, uh, the range is anywhere from 0% up to 2 and 3 quarters at the discretion of the township manager based on performance. Uh, for budgetary purposes, we use the full two and three quarters. Um, and then uh, this would exclude any um, or any of the wage adjustments for those folks that have employment agreements. Uh, that would be outside of this. So uh, for the township manager, for example, uh, the, the 2020 rate is set uh, with no increase at this time. All right, is there any... Um I'm sorry, any, yeah, oh yeah, we need the motion, I'm sorry. A motion to adopt the wage and salary schedule for 2020, please. So moved. Any commissioner comment? Any staff comment? Is there any public comment to the wage and salary schedule? All right, I will call the vote. All those in favor of adopting the wage and salary schedule for 2020, please indicate by saying aye. Aye, all those opposed? Commissioner Booker, how did you vote? Okay, I'm sorry, I did not see it. Uh, all right, motion passes six to nothing with Commissioner Abel off the dais. Ordinance 2019-15, introduction, amending the township zoning, or, zoning ordinance to allow townhouse development in, the, in certain areas of the C3 service commercial district and to provide regulations. Mr. Rice. Um, yes, uh, this is a proposed uh, zoning uh, amendment which would permit uh, a townhouse as defined in the amendment uh, within certain parts of the C3 zoning district. Uh, this is before you as a result of a zoning request petition uh, by the property owner. Mr. Cornelia is here to answer any questions. Thank Good you. Good evening. Nick Cornelia representing the uh, applicant on this. Um, this came before you previously. It went to the Planning Commission. Uh, Planning Commission's <coughs> really only change to the ordinance was to provide the residential use would be a uh, townhome type of use. So what this ordinance provides, it provides every use permitted in the C3 in addition to the residential townhome use in the, C3, in the C3 district provided you meet certain distance requirements from Lancaster Avenue. I think we've shown you before what areas are affected by it. It's the area uh, on the other side of the bridge on North Aberdeen Avenue, a small area that is already bordered by residential properties. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Cornelia. May I get a motion to introduce Ordinance 2019-15? So moved. All right, is there any commissioner discussion on this? Yeah. And this was introduced last meeting. This is for final. You said introduction. No, this is introduction. This is introduction. It was it was pulled last time okay, because there, right. was some, it was, it was there were some changes. Correct, Mr. Rice. Yes. So, Councilor, review with me again what change the Planning Commission suggested. They suggested limiting it to only townhomes or to ha having all residential uses. No, limiting to only townhomes in addition to the existing commercial uses, which is all, which already exist in the ordinance. And what's the rationale for that? I believe they thought townhomes were more attractive development than um, all residential uses, which would permit apartment use um, and high-level multiple-type dwellings. So they weren't worried about single-family homes. They were worried about 
apartments. That was my understanding, but I don't know. Yeah, Mary other other there. types of multifamily residential <laughs> uses. Uh, it wasn't clear from the original petition whether you would have apartments, whether you would have twins, whether you would have duplexes, whether so. Planning Commission um, and provided that comment just to limit this to townhome uses, which were more appropriate for this area of the township. So townhomes would presumably include twins, but not duplexes. Correct. Town it could a twin could be a townhome. A twin could be a townhome. Uh, John's maybe. saying no. Not sure about <laughs> that. So it means no. It does say by not more than two party wall. So it'd have to be at least three. At have to be three. three. Have to be three. The twins are excluded. Um, and there were nothing else from the Planning Commission on, I, and I, just to be clear, they, by limiting it from apartments, I guess they, their view was that there would be too much density with apartments versus three, two parting wall townhomes. I would assume that was the feeling. My biggest issue, and I made a point of this before, was the infiltration requirements of the stormwater, Section 255. I, I think that um, Jack has, once again, Jack has talked with the constituents in the area, and, and I understand that many people might feel that residential use is preferable to commercial use in that area. It is difficult to drive around in that area though, and I, I go through there quite a bit, especially with the new townhomes that are already there. Uh, it's tight, it's not regular roads, and so I'm concerned about that. But I guess the Planning Commission th thought that apartments would increase the number of people living in that area to a point where it exceeded the benefits versus townhomes. You could have six or eight or, you know, ten apartments in the same place where you could, would have a, a three-unit townhome development. Higher density. Higher density, right. Yeah. Yeah, and there's stuff there now. It's not like there's nothing there. If you just restore the area to what it was originally, then, because there's stuff there now, but it's burned down. We've got to first deal with the blight. But if you just put it back to the way that it was, then you're still going to have, I guess, additional traffic there. You could have significantly more if you turned it into, instead of restoring it to what it was, if you turn it into commercial, which is plan B, um, depending on what you put in there, you could have significantly more traffic than you would with just a couple of townhomes. Well, it's the whole triangular block, right? It's not just, is the, not what, really it, what area was burned out? Say. What's that? There's, there's the house that's burned down and there's the um, old pool supply store that's right next to it. There's right, but that's that, that's that whole block, right? It's it's a, a larger area than those properties, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a couple block area, I would say. If we yeah. Can, do you have a crystal? Yeah. But that's the area that's intended to be developed. Do we have a picture of it? I don't know. Oh, do you have it on there? Nick, you're familiar with the zoning in the township as a whole. Um, are there other areas where this could it be effective? No, it was specifically designed to limit it to this area because there are other C3 areas, but they're on Lancaster Avenue. Uh, this, this restriction would be limited that you had to be 450 feet from a, an arterial, which is Lancaster Avenue. So the only other C3 areas, there's one where the car wash is on Conestoga and Lancaster, and uh, there's one actually fronting on Lancaster Avenue that would not be included, the car wash would not be included, and I believe, Christy, the only other area was this area that was C3 area. And what's, again, what's Glenbrook? Glenbrook is C1. Oh, okay. Right, so this is the area right there with the red, so it's several areas that this would apply. Correct, the area outlined in red is the area that would be applicable to. Right, so I, I thought it was more, I don't know what, what, what property was burned out, but I, I knew it was a large area. So, that's, so, so, so again, my issue here is, 218? I, I, my issue is infiltration requirement because 
what I don't want to do is to approve for new uses in these zoning areas and then have people come in with townhomes and say, we can't perk, we need to, we need a waiver from the stormwater requirements. Um, so I think it's very important that stormwater be kept on site. Every single one of the waivers, and there was three more last week when I wasn't here, they moved them to consent agenda so we didn't have to discuss this. Every single time we grant a waiver from the infiltration requirement, we are making the flooding in the township worse. And we need to get a, a handle on this. We, we either have to c make everyone comply with this or we shouldn't make anyone comply with it. And if we're not going to make people, if we're gonna provide waivers, then we are making stormwater flooding worse. And all we need to look and see how we're doing out there tonight in these heavy rains and everyone knows about the flooding issues here. So the introduction to this, I would make this introduction contingent on compliance with the storm, with the infiltration requirements of the stormwater uh, provisions of the ordinance in order to exercise the additional uses provided under this ordinance. Now, this area already has pretty much is covered by impervious. The current ordinance provides of 65% impervious coverage. It has been reduced or increased, the requirement's been increased to 60% impervious coverage. So in other words, the impervious coverage under the new ordinance, if we're going to develop under this new ordinance, decrease, it would be better from a stormwater management system. And you already have an area that has no stormwater management system. So anything you're to put that you're going to put in there with the redevelopment will improve the situation. Well, Whether I understood, but we need to make it. We waiver. need to make it better by keeping the water on every site, not here and every place. We sh we need to stop with the waivers altogether. And what's going to happen is applicants will come in to do townhomes and say we need a waiver from the stormwater, and we're going to exercise our rights under this new uh, requirement. So that's what I would want to see is no waivers from the stormwater. Keep stormwater on site because recognizing that more uh, or reduction in the impervious cover is, is fine, that's good, but we need to keep, in order to start to solve our stormwater flooding problems, the stormwater needs to be kept on everyone's site and infiltrated or kept on site, not merely detained and then run off the flood or, or put into rain gardens that are totally flooded and underwater while the whole, every, every area is flooded. So uh, that's what I would, um, I would say that no waivers on the stormwater in order to exercise and build townhomes. Um, as I mentioned, you would be improving the situation with the redevelopment, whether a waiver is granted or not granted, because you're reducing the impervious coverage and you're also providing for some sort of uh, stormwater management. Again, but you're not retaining it on, you're not, it's the infiltration is what we need to keep. We well, need to keep the stormwater on site. At the moment, we don't have a design in front of us, so we don't know what they're doing. This is a separate ordinance to deal with a zoning amendment change. But however, in this ordinance, we can make a provision. No, no waiver will be granted. I'm honestly not sure that we could do that, but uh, I hear what you're saying. Uh, in Lisa's absence, I can ask, is there any additional commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? Is there any public comment? You can chew up here, Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> Once Lisa gets back, I'm going to let her call the vote. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm calling the vote. All those in favor of the, uh, the introduction of Ordinance 2019-15, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion passes five to two. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, resolution 2019-125, awarding, contra awarding contract B, 19-012, 
for the Emlyn Tunnel Park Comfort Station installation. Can I get a mo motion to introduce or to approve? So, second. All right, Mr. Norsini, or oh, Tammy. Mrs. Cowan. Sorry, Mrs. Cowan. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Um, so um, resolution 2019-125, uh, this is hopefully the last stop uh, in getting the project completed, which has been long awaited uh, over at Emlyn Tunnel Park. Uh, as Mr. Norsini had mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, prefabricated, pre-engineered unit has been, the comfort station has been delivered to the site today. Uh, so it's actually over there, uh, along with a lot of the other uh, supplies that go along with putting the, uh, the building together. Uh, so this resolution would um, would award to Barclay Design and Construction uh, in the amount of three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. We're confident in their ability to to do this project. They actually just completed two units up in Tawamensin Township, uh, so we're excited to get moving um, and respectfully ask for uh, your authorization. All right. Any uh, commissioner comment to resolution twenty nineteen dash one twenty five? Is this money appropriated or budgeted? There's a part of the bond? It is. It was part of the, uh, the 2015 bond for park and trail improvements. Anything else? Any staff comment? Any public comment to the resolution? Okay. One more. Is there anybody that is, are we all resolved with the neighbors there that they're all happy with it and no one's going to come in and yell at us again? Well, I can never make that guarantee, but <laughs> we did spend a lot of time with the neighbors um, and members of the community uh, walking the site and uh, all, was, all was well there. And, and the school district? As well as the school district. All right, thank you for your work on this. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I will go ahead and call the vote. All those in favor of resolution 2019-125, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes seven, nothing. Yay, comfort station. Uh, resolution 2019-127, thank you. Thank you everyone for that. Uh, resolution 2019-127, award of the Renewable Energy and Conservation Planning Services contract to Practical Energy Solutions in the amount of 39,530, effective 1-1-2020. And for those who are unsure, this is the contract for the Ready for 100 uh, consulting services. Um, I need a motion to approve, please. You did? Oh, okay. I need a second. Second. All right. Commissioner, comment. I have, I have comment. I would direct a question towards whoever is asking for this appropriation. I don't know who is actually is awarding this contract and who's in charge of this. If Radnor Township actually achieves 100% clean renewable energy by 2035 and 100% renewable energy for heat and transportation by 2050, how many degrees centigrade will the, the temperature of the earth be reduced by our efforts? Just our efforts, just Radner's just, efforts. Just Radner's efforts. How how much how much well how much global cooling will we will we will we get if we get this Herculean effort? To do this actually will cost hundreds of millions of dollars by twenty fifty. Hundreds of millions of hundreds dollars. of millions. Hundred there's an estimate we have hundreds of millions of dollars to replace so, Justin Radner. Just okay. in Radner. So, Commissioner Booker, I think that the uh, intent of this is that it's the collective efforts of many. Um, and well, but as does, part of the Sierra Club effort and the, the goal. So, so how much if we do this? So we spend this money and we actually achieve it. How much? How much impact will will Radner's effort have on global warming? Congratulations! You've just discovered the tragedy of the commons. Let's so there's no on. there's no it will have no effect. As I guess is the answer. It will be. It's absolutely imperceptible, even if we spent the hundred million dollars or so to, to comply with this. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> what I, I read from some of the materials was that in order to have any effect to try to keep the warming under two degrees centigrade, it would require every township in the country 
to achieve these goals and every country in the world to achieve these goals as well. I thought you did believe in climate change. Yes. I, 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 I have <laughs> trouble believing with man-made. I'm not sure there's man-made. but so it I, what, make a difference. My point is, even if we uh, achieve this, it has no effect. Do it has huge cost. Landing? Has has no effect. It has huge cost. Do you believe the Earth is flat? And <laughs> and we need every other country Stop. to do the Z same Stop. to have any effect. And the most recent report just came out. None of the other countries are even close or even reducing their output and use of fossil fuels. Rich Booker wants to be like France. Okay. So, so so my point my point is the only thing that this township and the world should, what we should be focusing on is mitigating the use of fossil fuels not on eliminating but mitigating the any perceived or real I don't know what they are but the mitigation the mitigation is what should be concentrated on because it's absolutely, this is a futile effort, and it's not without expense. And again, I will also say that when the Ready for 100 resolution was proposed and passed, it was aspirational. It was not supposed to cost money, and my, my caucus was, it was, oh, it's aspirational. This is real money. We are increasing taxes, 6%. We are increasing sanitary sewer fees, 10%. We are cutting the oh. budgets of our, and our gifts to places like Radnor Historical Society, which I, I don't know what that, what, I think that the only reason that that was proposed to be cut is because I proposed to give them more. I, I think that that's what that came down to from the vindictive uh, Democrat uh, majority. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> We're, in times when we're cutting and not reducing, we are going to hand over $40,000 to who knows. I, I asked for a copy the last two meetings ago of this contract. I have no idea who's getting this money or what it actually that they're going the to do with it. The contract is in the packet. Did you not read the packet? Um, I'm reading the resolution right now, so let's see. Oh. I don't, I don't see the... Uh, so, Commissioner Booker, okay. I don't see the contract. Commissioner Booker, I, But the point is that this... Even if it's completely Call successful, okay. pardon me, excuse me. Excuse, all right, gentlemen. It, even please. if completely successful, it will have absolutely no effect on on any kind of climate change, and it will be hugely expensive. This is this is already hugely expensive in a time when we're increasing taxes, when we're reducing our amounts to things like libraries in the senior center and Radnor Historical Center, this is absolutely a misplaced display of, of the misplaced values and the tax and spend attitudes of our Democrat Move to close tyrannical the majority. Okay, tyrannical, wow. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Booker. Is there anyone else that has any comment to... Uh, this is tyranny, it's tyranny. Uh, resolution 2019-127. Okay. Uh, Besides the fact that it's tyranny, is there any other comments? All right. <laughs> is there any other? Is there any staff comment? Is there any public comment? All right, I will call the vote um, because this is not a tyranny. I am going to call the vote. Resolution 2019-127. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. Okay. Motion passes five to two. Moving on, resolution 2019-128, Skunk Hollow Sanitary Sewer Trunk Line Replacement Authorization of Change Order Number One in the amount of $52,633.63. Mr. Norsini, this very worthwhile project. Thank you, Madam President. So we had, uh, this is actually four change orders. Uh, these were all items that were found in the field uh, there was a Verizon duct tank that was not marked. Uh, there were two trees as we were as they were doing their clearing, two dead trees near Dari Paoli Road, uh, but in the project area that we requested them to remove. Uh, there is a manhole and lateral extension 
coming from our Drossen as well as a landhole, manhole and lateral extension down by sawmill that were found in the field. So the total for all four are $52,633.63. Staff requests, respectfully request that these be approved for payment. Okay, uh, resolution 2019-128. I am going to move to approve the uh, authorization of the change orders. May I get a second? Second. Any commissioner comment to 2019-128? One one question: This twenty thousand eight oh eight for the manhole near Little Darby Creek, for existing lateral serving Ardrossan development, is that something that should be allocated to the the whole development, the Ardrossan development, as um, uh, necessary upgrades to serve that development? No, sir. That was connected to the original trunk line. It was not picked up by the consultant, so we did this as an addendum, uh, as a change order once the bid went out. It's a service we have to provide. They were originally collected, connected. We are just reconnecting them to the new line. And there's no way you can find to... Uh... If there was a way, I would, sir, but this on this one, it's all us. Any other commissioner comment to the sanitary sewer trunk line replacement. Any staff comment? Any public comment? I had all those in favor of 2019-128, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Commissioner Booker, how did you vote? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right, motion passes six to nothing with Commissioner Nagel off the dais. Okay, um, stand, any reports from the standing committees of the board? Okay, uh, new business. Motion to cancel the December 16th Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move to cancel the meeting on the 16th. Uh, we will have, uh, it's my understanding from staff that we um, do not have any pressing business and that we can give this board and our staff uh, and our community a nice holiday gift and cancel a meeting. So I make a motion. Uh, may I get a second? Yes. <laughs> second. All right. Is there any commissioner comment to canceling the December 16th Board of Commissioners meeting? Hardly endorse it. I think it's a wonderful idea. <laughs> My God, this is the best motion ever. Any staff comment? Anyone upset by this? Anyone? I'd like to amend the motion to cancel all future meetings. <laughs> um, any, so no staff comment? All right, is there any public comment? Then I will call the vote. All those in favor of canceling the December 16th Board of Commissioners meeting so everyone can start on their holiday festivities early, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing with Commissioner Nagel off the dais. Um, so before we move on to old I have, business. I have new business. Okay, what is it? Um, so I just want to let everyone know, I don't know if this is new business or old business, but uh, Villanova is proposing, University is proposing a uh, 1,000, pardon me, 150,000, pardon, uh, square foot uh, building, I guess an annex or an addition um, on their campus. So I know that's gonna be at the zoning hearing Zoning hearing board on the 19th. On the 19th, so uh, it's it's a pretty big, my opinion, it's a pretty big, it's a sizable building, four stories. I believe they don't, they would go as high as what, 52 feet? And uh, those that live around there, um, if you have an interest in going and you have uh, standing, you may wanna go. Thank you, agreed. Okay, so that was just an announcement. Um, all right, well, before, uh, before we move into all business, I know that, Rich, you had something. Yeah, I, I'd like to call okay. Bill before you put everything away. Could I, there was not attached to the motion that was covered under consent agenda for Act 511 collection services. Um, there was not a schedule of the actual charges and the contingent fee 
that was to be collected by that contractor. It said the same as 2013. Uh, I'd like to have a separate vote on that schedule uh, because it was not included in the packet, and I don't, I don't happen to have or recall what that was from 2013. So we already approved that in the consent agenda. So do we pull it out for a separate vote? Or? I'm no, calling for a uh, separate, vote on it. separate separate approval for the actual schedule so we know what the, con the contingent fee is. What, what, what is the amount of the contingent fee and what are the break points for how it's earned as far as collection of new and identification of new revenues from township businesses. Act 511 taxes are the business privilege and mercantile tax. And I think it also includes LST. Uh, not LST. Not LST? No. You have that, Bill? Yeah, well, the, the legislation was written that uh, it gave the township manager authority to sign the agreement. Um, if you, if the board would like, we'll bring it back in January with the agreement once we have those terms. Well, no, it's approved. I just want to approve the, what the actual contingent fee is. Yeah, I believe it's 20%, but I'm, I'm sure it's right in front of me, although I'm looking at it, and it's just not coming out to me. I just... Schedule, schedule didn't come back. Okay. As, as you know, it's I... It's going to be in that ballpark, which is this, the same as it, it was under the agreement we had with the prior company. It says, doesn't this. it say fiscal impact? Isn't this it? They will be compensated on percentage of tax revenues generated by newly discovered and unregistered businesses. Correct. For which they identify and bring into compliance. Right. But we don't so know, we don't know how much revenue or what the percentage is. So... That's, that's my question, that's what I'd, I'd like to have. Um, and I, as you know, I'm, I am not a proponent of contingent fee uh, arrangements. I believe that it encourages over-aggressive and nuanced interpretations of the tax law and its application against unsophisticated and small businesses. However, um, if we can bring that for the next meeting, I can prove that separately because we don't, none of us know what it is. Thank yeah. you. And, uh just for the enjoyment of prolonging this meeting. Um, the, this, in, this, and we didn't talk about it earlier, so that this, in, this agreement uh, would simply identify businesses. The onus would then be on the township to seek them out and bring them into compliance. Uh, and that's when uh, the, um, the payment of the contingency would be made. In no way, shape, or form would e-collect uh, go out and enforce the local tax laws. That, that, that's not how it works. And we go through this with the auditor as well. It's the administration. It, it, we're the ones that are enforcing the laws. We have folks that help us identify, and, and this is an important component to that, because uh, we simply are not, cannot be everywhere and see everything. Uh, and I would imagine that the businesses that do comply with the law would like to have some assurances that their neighbors are doing the same. Uh, and that's what this business would help us do. Uh, but yeah, once once um, I have the final agreement, we'll make sure that the board sees it. Okay, great. All right, thank you. So we will have that on for uh, January. And, and again, it's, that's kind of nuanced, Bill. If they identify the township, it, we enforce it, it's all the same thing, it's enforcement, so. Okay, so we have one last thing to do here um, before we call for public participation. And uh, Commissioner Clark, I'm sorry, I know you were with your family and your children with obligations earlier. So we would like to uh, recognize you. And now what is your last meeting since we have voted to cancel the meeting on the 16th? So please, if you join. Uh... Thank you. Luke. Um. Would just like to recognize and thank uh, Commissioner Clark for his years of service. Again, as we spoke about earlier, um, Luke is one that represented his uh, residents and constituents uh, extremely well. Um, emails that would come in would get forwarded on immediately. He would meet with uh, residents. 
I know the first time I got together with Luke, we were walking through backyards and through the woods. <laughs> We've been out in rainstorms and getting soaked and in mud uh, and dealing with unhappy residents when it's pouring rain, <laughs> as well as uh, looking through a lot of things. And I appreciate you taking the time always uh, and always very respectful to the staff thanking them for what they do, and I know that goes a, a, a long way with our staff. And uh, uh, I know that your time that you've served, uh, there was a lot of time taken away from your family as well. Uh, you're always available for a phone call at any particular time, and I tell you, for not only from myself, but the entire staff, we thank you for that. So on behalf of the entire administration, everyone here, it's been a joy to work with you. Uh, we'll miss you, and just want to thank you so much for, for all that you did for this community and the sacrifice that you made. Thank you. So I just want to say when I uh, joined the board um, and Luke was the vice president and I was president, I really had no clue what I was doing. Um, some days it still looks like I have no clue. Um, but luckily I have Commissioner Booker sometimes to let me know that. And um, constructive criticism. But constructive criticism. But Commissioner Clark, um, Luke, you really were very helpful to me when um, and I think that we worked together really well. Mm -hmm. We didn't always agree, for sure, but that's okay. Um, it was, I felt like with you and I, it always was take the vote and we move on. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I um, appreciate your service, your service to your ward. Um, and again, as Bob said, time away from your family. We, uh, some of us, you know, so I may, everyone may not know um, how much time we do spend uh, ministering to the needs of the constituents and working with township staff. And when you have three children, now four, um, I can't even imagine what that's like because mine don't even live at home anymore and I know how much time it takes me. So um, we appreciate that. The community definitely appreciates that. And uh, I know we'll see you again doing something uh, wonderful and great in public service. Sure. So thank you Absolutely. very much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, can I one more? Sure. Um, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, the Township staff, and the residents, Luke, we'd like to give you this token of our appreciation. Uh, it reads, Radnor Township's award of appreciation is hereby granted to Lucas A. Clark in recognition of your dedicated service to Radnor Township community by serving on the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners, please know that the citizens, commissioners, and staff of Radnor Township sincerely appreciate and thank you for your outstanding performance and lasting contributions to help make Radnor Township the best place to live, work, play, and do business on the main line. Thanks, Bob. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, and thank you everybody for letting me do this at the end. I apologize for missing earlier. Um, my kids have gotten very into Advent, so uh, that was something I couldn't forgo. Um, but with that being said, when uh, we moved here, my wife and I moved up here in 2011 after the birth of our son, and my wife's from Florida. So when we had our son, she went to, to law school up here, obviously before that, but once we had our son, we were living down in Media, outside of Media, and she said, where should we be? That Radnor place was pretty nice, and I said, that's the best place to be in this area, in the region, probably in the country. So that's why we moved up here, and I wanted to show my appreciation for it um, by getting involved in township government and running for election and getting involved at this level. And it's been, a good, it's been a good experience. The meetings have been long sometimes, but that's because there's a lot of people here who care. Um, most notably, um, those still out in the crowd at this late hour who always make it through, I give you all a lot of credit for <laughs> coming and being dedicated residents. Um, the seven commissioners up here, uh, no matter what years they were, you've got seven people up there who care. They may not always get along, uh, but they care, and they're here for the right reasons. And, um, and our staff, our staff is fantastic. I, I can't tell you how good they are. I think everybody here knows that. And, if anybody doesn't know that, I'll be the first to tell you that we're very fortunate to have the staff we have. They are available at any time for anything, and I think that's hard to find. There are other, there are other townships where you can't even figure out who the solicitor is, I think. If you looked on their website here, I think you could get a hold of anybody on their cell phone pretty easily, no matter who you are. So uh, this is a great township, and um, it's been a good experience. So thank you all. Thank you all for the help and the guidance, and uh, I, I will miss it. But. Um, as, as Lisa said, four kids has become a little more daunting than I thought, so. <laughs>
Thank you, everybody. Um, would anyone like, would any of our, my... You can always run again in four years, Look. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to, to add? All right. Well, thank you, Luke. And I know yeah, Brittany, you, Brittany will be back, glad to have you back on Monday nights. That's true. I'm sure. Um, all right, with that, I will call for our final public participation. Hi there. Roberta Winters, 326 Williams Road. I was not here earlier, but I would like to add my appreciation and that of the League of Women Voters for our commissioners who will no longer be serving with us. That's Mr. Clark and Mr. Nagel. And also to express our appreciation for all those who ran for office, whether they won or did not win, because having competitive elections makes good government even better. So thank you all for your service, and thank you all those who've considered to serve our township. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening? All right. So uh, before I ask for a motion to adjourn, I'd like to wish everyone a very, very happy holiday. Our staff, our police officers, our fire department, uh, our residents, and my fellow commissioners. Um, I hope you all have a, a wonderful holiday and, uh, and enjoy. So with that, so uh, moved. So moved. I will call for a motion to <laughs> adjourn. <laughs> I need a second. second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much.